really appreciate Greg. Uh, he's an old friend of mine. Makes this old man see good. If you need any glasses, cool Oakley stuff like I wear, see dead there's opticians. Greg's been a longtime supporter for me for lots of years now, and uh, he uh, not only helps me, but he helps uh, a lot of the racers and everything. So uh, if you're looking for uh, sunglasses, definitely should give him a call. He's very supportive of racing, and uh, that's always uh, good to have somebody that uh, gives back to the sport like he does. Since 1999, Fregola Performance Systems has been helping to make the most complex performance plumbing jobs easier. With innovative plumbing solutions like our real street hose ends that work in pump gas and ethanol applications, to our expander and reducer hose ends and specialty adapters, no job is off limits. Family owned and manufactured in the United States with three generations overseeing daily operations, quality control, and on-time delivery is assured. Browse our catalog or find the dealer nearest you at fregolaperformancesystems.com. Fregola Performance Systems, your performance plumbing partner. Twenty twenty one is gonna be a great year to rediscover family fun and American freedom. And there's no better place to find all American family entertainment than Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. We are host to some of the nation's greatest grassroots motorsports, including lake models, sprint cars, pro pulling, drag boats, and more. There's also amazing food and refreshments, attractions, distractions, and merchandise. For more info, visit lucasoilspeedway.com. Lucas Oil Speedway, where motorsports come to life. As general manager of Mel Hamilton Ford for 11 years, I know what customers are looking for. Great service with certified technicians, a great sales experience with plenty of inventory to choose from. And don't forget, parts and other gear to take care of all your racing needs. So when you decide who you want to do business with, choose us, Mel Hamilton Ford, and experience the difference. Hey, you know what I'm always asking myself? Is work supposed to be this much fun? Hi friends, Phil Nightingale, General Manager of Mel Hamilton Ford. With over 500 pre-owned vehicles in stock, there's never been a better time to buy. At Mel Hamilton Ford, you'll find cars, trucks, SUVs, all in one location. Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, Kia, plenty of inventory to choose from, not just Fords. At Mel Hamilton Ford, you have our promise that every vehicle is inspected by a certified technician because we care. Let our experienced sales staff show you that buying a car can be easy. Come out and check us out in person or check us out online at mhford.com. Mel Hamilton Ford, experience the difference for yourself. Hi, I'm Chris Davis. My wife Jan and I are co-owners of Midwest Sheet Metal here in Springfield, Missouri. We acquired the, the company from my father-in-law about 25 years ago. We're a 75-year-old company. We do a, just custom fabrication of stainless, aluminum, and carbon steel. And we do quite a bit with the national and local racers uh, across the country. The unique thing about us is somebody comes to us with an idea that if they want fabricated, we can make this happen. We can fabricate anything, any one-off thing that you might want. I've gained the trust with the racers over the years that they know that I will fabricate it for them and, and nobody knows about it. Most all the products that we advertise, we keep in stock. I mean, I, I'm tired of this. We can order it for you. The main stuff that we advertise is in stock, ready to ship. We can usually ship anything in one to two days. That's a big deal with the racers, but we have it in stock ready to ship.
Race fans, get ready to experience the action like never before with the free My Race Pass app. On race day, hit the Entries tab to see who signed in for the night in every class. As the cars hit the track, hit the Lineups tab to see where everyone is starting. Follow along with the action live with live timing and scoring and even follow your driver wherever he is running. Get into the action like never before with the My Race Pass app. My Race Pass, the ultimate racing resource. Hi everybody, Marshall Fagers here in the QA1 Precision Products booth at PRI. First up top here we have the first two and a quarter inch diameter drive shaft designed for an open competition dirt super late model. These will hold up to 900 horsepower. We've been running them for a few years now with zero failures. Um, this is a little bit softer in torsion than your typical three inch diameter drive shaft. What that does is help keep the car hooked up coming out of the corner when the car's on the bars bouncing up and down. Um, on a rough tacky track, it helps to smooth out the RPM curve a little bit. It takes your high RPMs, your low RPMs, and just smooths out that transition a little bit. It helps keep the car hooked up. Down below here, we have the 3.2 inch diameter extreme misalignment angle drive shaft. What we've done here is actually done a little bit of CNC work on the tube yoke to let the rear U-joint articulate further before it binds up. And what that does is lets you run a little bit more left rear drop before you run into pinion angle bind. To learn more, check us out online at qa1.net or find us on Facebook. American racing started on dirt tracks with tough men in both winged and non-winged sprint cars proving their bravery and skill with every lap. That kind of racing still exists and you can see it at the 11th annual ASCS War Jesse Hawk and Daniel McMillan Memorial. Grassroots racing at its finest. It all happens September 16th through the 18th and it's only at Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. For tickets and info, visit lucasoilspeedway.com. Lucas Oil Speedway, where motorsports come to life. Harvest time means it's time to bring out the tractors. But not just any tractors. We're bringing out the wildest, fire-breathing, 10,000-horsepower tractors on steroids. It's the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling National. This is loud, proud, American family fun at its finest. It all happens September 24th and 25th. And it's only at Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. For tickets and info, visit lucasoilspeedway.com. lucasoilspeedway.com. Lucas. Lucas. Weir's machine has been innovating the Ultra Force load machines and developed the Ultra Force suspension to the next level. Shop now at ultraforcetech.com. The USMTS souvenir needs from jackets to hoodies to t-shirts to can koozies and so much more. The USMTS souvenir trailer has it all. The USMTS Souvenir Trailer can be found online at shopusmts.com. See a wide variety of merchandise and accessories to help you get prepared for race day. Ordering is very simple and will even ship right to your doorstep. Visit the USMTS Souvenir Trailer today and get ready for when the best of the best of the USMTS visits your local racetrack. Zach Vanderbeek here, Dirt Modified Racer. Been using FK Rod Ends for about 10 years now. Maria and their crew have provided exceptional products for me, racing competitively on the USMTS Tour. I choose to put the best parts on my race car, and obviously I choose to put FK Ability and the, and the product you can tell is second to none. FK Rod Ends provide strong and durable parts for us so we can stay on the racetrack in some of the worst conditions and keeps us finishing races. I highly recommend their product. If you're looking for a really high quality rod end, go check those guys out, see what they got. They've got multiple options and uh, their, their product is awesome.
race fans, it's the most beautiful side in dirt modified racing. Old Glory flies four wide with the USMTS. Down the front straightaway, Ryan Gustin, Derek Ramirez to the line, and a photo finish! Good evening and welcome to the Arklatech Speedway here for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash in Vivian, Louisiana. We're live here on the Race and Dirt pre-race show. Bryce Hall alongside a steam. Tyler, before we uh, recap last night's racing, talk about what's ahead here tonight. Let's just talk about always fun trip to the land of three right down here. We've got a great racetrack, plenty of great food, plenty of great entertainment, just everything we enjoy here in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cut short in the last Cajun clash of the 2019 Saturday night rained out. I was super bummed. So I'm very excited to get back to this racetrack. The, uh, the racing is phenomenal. Obviously, you've already been here this season well, with the arms race. So uh, I'm really looking forward to tonight. we got a great field of modifies this back off here in our, our left shoulder. And uh, it's going to be a good night. Yeah, it's always fun to come here. You know, Gene Boyder and Cruz always got the track on point. You're always going to see a great modified race. Um, as you can hear, the engine's over on the backside getting ready already for hot laps. So great night coming up. 45 USMTS modifies. $10,000 to win tonight for the USMTS Modifieds. In addition to the series regulars, we always see some great local contingent here at Arkla Tech Speedway like Chris Hennigan, um, Jason Ingles, some of those racers as well who have already here at Arkla Tech this weekend. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. There's a great group of guys in this area. Uh, you see them a lot throughout the course of the year. Those guys don't necessarily get a race with a lot of those guys. You know, the guys like Jake Tim or Lucas Schott or Zach Vanderbeek. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how those guys really intermix here tonight at the Arkla Tech Speedway. Looking back to last night's feature at the RPM Speedway, the uh, the blows continue to be exchanged between Jake O'Neill and Derek Ramirez. Derek Ramirez picked up his fifth win of the season last night at RPM Speedway. And it was an absolutely wild feature. 34 laps caution free. First caution came out with six laps to go. But it was complete chaos up until that point. Yeah, absolutely. I, I actually, when that caution came out, I remember texting somebody from back home. It was pretty crazy. Ramirez was all by himself, and then there was Wolf, and then Shot was in front of the whole the whole gobble of cars, right? And there was lap cars in there. There was guys that were battling for position. There was slide jobs. It was it was utter chaos, and you just knew eventually something was going to happen. And then, of course, that restart, I was really thinking that Tyler Wolf was going to do something spectacular. He really didn't. You know, Lucas Schott had a really good drive off of one and two, and ultimately it was Derek Ramirez that just was the most dominant car last night. Yeah, looking at Tyler Wolf there, he was, you know, dive bombing through the lap traffic, and I thought maybe when he gets some clean air he'll have a shot, but you're right. He really didn't at Derek Ramirez. Derek really gets around RPM Speedway well. Mentioned Lucas Schott had another great night finishing in the third place spot. Tip of the cap as well, Carlos Amata Jr., nice fourth place run. When things got really crowded, come off of turn number four, that's where he picked up a couple spots to land in the top five. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Carlos Amon had a really good run uh, the last night when we were there the first part of the season in March. So that was actually a guy that I was kind of curious to see how he was going to adapt to RPM Speedway last night, and he did a really great job. And, and it's really good to see that 65 car come along. Of course, he won King of America. He's had his ups and downs, and it's really great. Uh, this is Last night, I, when we were congratulating Victor Lane, he said Arkla Tech Speedway is one of his favorite racetracks. So that 65 car might be kind of a car to keep an eye on tonight. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of great cars to watch, of course. Uh, mentioned it here in the grandstands a little bit earlier on. Kate Dillard back behind a modified again this weekend. Raced last week at Deer Creek Speedway in Fayette County. So interesting to see the thriller back on home turf. Yeah, absolutely. And I know a lot of people are in the stands here are really excited to see Cade back behind a modified tonight. Uh, and I just remember, I specifically, the last time I was here, I have a really good shot that really sticks out. It was a 3-4 wide shot, and Ronnie Sanders was in there, Cade Dillard, Ryan Gustin. And uh, it just it's a, this is a really fun, exciting racetrack and right here in, in Cade's backyard. So that's another guy that's going to be a lot of people are going to be focused on that 97 tonight. Yeah, you mentioned Rodney Sanders last night had an absolute rocket ship. Um, you know, started 20th on the grid, nearly up to the top five, somewhere around there. Unfortunately, he and Chris Kratzer came together. Um, his night got cut off early, but if he can pick up where he left off last night here at Arkla Tech, I think he's going to have a good run as well. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, it sounds kind of weird, but Rodney Sanders is a guy that we really haven't talked a whole lot about. And 
like I said, that, that really sounds weird for the defending USMTS national champion, right? But uh, he's kind of lurking there in the in the background, right? He's sitting third in USMTS national points right now. It's been a while since he's picked up a win. So uh, that 20 car, you just never know when he's going to get on his rails. And, of course, the time of year where things really start to matter, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what that 20 car is going to do tonight. Lots to look forward to here tonight at the Arkla Tech Speedway for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. 45 USMTS Modifieds checked in for tonight's 10,000 to win event. Hot lap's going to be coming up shortly here from Arkla Tech. In the meantime, we'll step aside, take a quick break here on Racing Dirt TV. to Devil's Bowl Speedway in Mesquite, Texas to watch 150 drivers race at the same time for $25,000. It's full of non-stop action, thrills, and spills. Adult tickets are just $15. Affordable family fun that your kids will love. Don't miss the 8th Annual Lone Star 600 presented by FCA Motorsports. Get your tickets now at LoneStar600.com. CRS Suspension and Fabrication is your trusted source for premium dirt oval shocks. For dwarf cars to late models and everything in between, we also offer adjustable spoilers and adjustable shock mounts, upgrades, car setup services, and even professional tech support for your entire racing season. You either run CRS shocks or you get out ran by them. Call us today, 254-933-CRS1. People need to come to this race because one, I mean, you got 180 cars on the track all at the same time for 300 laps. What can't be fun to watch about that? There's action all over the track no matter where you look. It's not like a, a Saturday night race where you got your group right here, you're watching the whole time. No, there is something going on over the entire track at all, every single lap. I mean, it's a blast. Don't miss the eighth annual Lone Star 600 presented by FCA Motorsports. Get your tickets now at LoneStar600.com. Well, it's about a perfect cross between uh, NASCAR and your weekly racing of dirt track. Dirt track, you get the speed, the dirt, cars pulling sliders, uh, reversals, where NASCAR you usually always get the longevity. So it's basically dirt's version of NASCAR. You get the best of both worlds. Don't miss the eighth annual Lone Star 600 presented by FCA Motorsports. Get your tickets now at LoneStar600.com. Yeah, we sell those auto control bars. Yeah, I mean, they, they're the secret to victory lane. Does the auto control bar work? He takes the lead early in the race. He brings home the Southern Sport Mod main event win. Speed secret, the throttle control bar on a track like this is where it's at. I mean, one, two, three. Too many checks to count in here. I would say they work pretty good.
to the USMTS competition here tonight at Arkla Tech Speedway. Drivers that will compete in Simpson Performance Products Heat Race Number One will be the first to take to the racetrack here for their hot lap sessions. First driver out of the racetrack comes to you from uh, Wichita, Kansas, the Gressel Racing 2G. That is Brandon Givens behind him. Watertown, South Dakota's Jason Good, the Cutting Technologies, number 85. Then we'll find the Springfield, Missouri veteran Terry Phillips out of Springfield, Missouri. He's in the Don Babb Motorsports 75, along with the Mel Hamilton Ford 02 of Tanner Mullins out of Wichita, Kansas. Chris Clark out of Jackson, Wyoming. The grain handler 8C rolls through turns one and two. Just ahead of Kevin Peters. Kevin Peters in that KPM Consulting number 21. Billy Jack Brutchen with us this evening. Brutchen Racing out of Gladewater, Texas. He is in the Jack's Welding Service number 78. Final few cars on track for this group. Colton Horner, Horn out of Houston, Texas. The Houston Specialty Products number 56. Kyle Beard also in the field tonight out of Truman, Arkansas. The man, Motorsports number 86, along with Gregory Muirhead. Muirhead in that Muirhead Motorsports number 22 out of Maybank, Texas. Your drivers here in group number one. So a quick green, a white, checkered hot lap session there for group number one. We will blaze right through our hot laps here this evening. These modifieds will be back out on the racetrack a little bit later on for group qualifying as we get set to go to work on hot laps here for Fast Shafts Heat Race number two. Driver that won last night at the RPM Speedway and reclaimed the Risco Industries points leader spoiler. Woodward, Oklahoma's Derek Ramirez in the Boom Test Well Service 4R will lead the field out of the staging area behind him. It'll be Chris Kratzer. Kratzer out of Wichita, Kansas, the Wichita Tire and Alignment, number 19R. Behind him, it's Dylan Pike out of Waxahachie, Texas, the Northside RV Resort, number six star. And cool hand, Lucas Schott, last night's third place finisher. The Schott's hardwood floor, 69 out of Chatfield, Minnesota. Chris Hennigan in the field here this evening out of Marshall, Texas, the Panel Trust, 16. Rolls Imperial, California, it's Lance Murray. He is in that J&M Custom Auto, number 19 SB. Casey Fowler. Texas Locomotive Solutions 64 rolls down the back straightaway. Fido Gallardo crosses just under the flag stand. The Las Cruces. First handful of drivers here on track for... Hot laps and fast shafts heat race number two. Mason Williams making his way to the racetrack as well. Williams out of Folk, Arkansas on the Charlie Williams painting 24W. Your driver's on track here for hot laps and fast shafts heat race number two. So hot lap session number two under the checkered flag as well. We'll move on to hot laps for the drivers in Edelbrock Heat Race number three, working through hot laps here for the Summit Racing Equipment United States Modified Touring Series fueled by Casey's. 46 USMTS Modifieds on hand here tonight, five heat races, a couple of real racing wheels, B-mains, and, of course, tonight's 10,000 to win. 
40 laps, Summit Racing Equipment A main fueled by Casey's. Next flight of cars rolling out of the staging area over outside of turns three and four. Meet and greet the next set of drivers. Here shortly for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. So Kay Dillard out of Robeline, Louisiana will roll out onto the racetrack. He is in the SNS Fishing and Rental number 97. And we'll find Manuel Williams the second rolling down the front straight away as well. The Charlie Williams painting 24M out of Folk, Arkansas. There is Kenny Gaddis. Gaddis out of Diana, Texas. The transmission's unlimited, number 2G. There's Rodney Sanders, rough night last night for the Rocket. At a happy Texas in the Wichita Tank Racing at number 20. T.J. Tollison follows him down through turns one and two. Tollison out of Bevins, Texas. He's in the JT's Trucking 38T. There's last night's runner-up as well, Fayetteville, Arkansas's Tyler Wolf, the Army Contractors 4W. Tommy Cannon in this hot lap group as well. Cannon out of Denham Springs, Louisiana, the Arnold Welding and Fabrication 718. Jake Gallardo. The Team GRC, J17, rolling down into turn number one. Gallardo out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. As we get set to turn them loose in hot laps here for Edelbrock Heat Race number three. So hot laps for Edelbrock Heat Race number three under the checkered flag. Two more groups to go here for hot laps in the USMTS Modified MSD Heat Race number four. Next set of drivers to roll out of the racetrack for their hot lap sessions here this evening. Don't forget race fans, swing down to the USMTS Souvenir Trailer over the course of the evening. Check out all the great 2021 apparel while you're down there. See the folks at Race Ranch as well. Race Ranch with a ton of great looking motorsport swag that you can get your hands on. Be sure to pay those folks a visit throughout the course of the evening. Next set of cars out of the racetrack. Raymond of Mississippi's Brooks Strength will lead him out. He's in the direct auto parts, triple four out of Raymond of Mississippi. Behind him, it'll be Nathan Smith. Smith out of Anthony, New Mexico. The RVB Transport number 88. There's Tyler Davis back behind the wheel of his huge racing chassis car this evening. The Freight Logistics 65 out of Hayesville, Kansas. There's Zach Vanderbeek got a new share in Iowa. The Casey's 33Z rolls off into turn number one. Just ahead of Sean Gaddis out of Diana, Texas. The transmission's unlimited, number seven. Pine Island of Minnesota's JT Wasman back with us this evening. The Med City Collision 51W. And behind him, fresh off a top five finish last night at RPM Speedway, Carlos Samata Jr., the Hacienda Mechanical 65X. Final two cars on the track for this hot lap session. Dustin Sorensen out of Rochester, Minnesota, the Ford Metro Inc. number 19. And the Gaddis Racing 2S of Stephen Gaddis. And Henderson, Texas, your drivers on track for hot laps in MSD Heat 4. So final set of hot laps getting set to roll out onto the Arklatech Speedway. Drivers and VP Racing Fuels Heat Race number five will take their time to practice here at the Arklatech Speedway ahead of group qualifying for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. 
Jason Ingles is going to lead him out of the racetrack, the Longview Texas racer. That Mr. Plumber, number 12, will lead the field out on the racetrack behind him. Winona, Minnesota's Jake Tim. He's in that Herco Mind Over Metal, number 49, Junior. Behind Tim, a fellow Minnesotan. That is Lakeshore, Minnesota's Dan Ebert. The Collins Brothers towing of St. Cloud, number 60. Just ahead of Salina, Oklahoma veteran Jason Hughes. The West Silo Pond and Murphy Oil Company, number 12, rolls just past the flag stand. Fellow Sooner State racer behind him, Claremore, Oklahoma's Joe Duval, the drive WFX.com, number 91. RVB Transport 2SS, that is Mark Smith out of Anthony, New Mexico, along with the driver that now sits second in the national point standings, 12 points back from Derek Ramirez, the Red Eye Radiator Zero, that is Jake O'Neill. Kurt Myers in this group as well at Cameron, Wisconsin, the H&E Ready Mix 1M, along with Sheridan, Wyoming's Bart Taylor, He's in the Taco Johns, number 369. As we go green here in the final group for hot laps here this evening at the Arklatech Speedway. So that will do it for hot laps in the Summit Racing Equipment United States Modified Touring Series fueled by Casey's. They'll return in the next couple of moments for their group qualifying sessions. Until then, we'll roll through some more hot laps here. I'll turn it back over to Colin. All right, race fans, now entering the Speedway will be your Pro Mod hot, hot lap sessions. We have 14 Pro Mods checked in tonight. First car on the speedway. It's going to be the bootlegger race cars 26 of James Griffin, followed by the 16 of Jason Beasley. The down home meets 515 is Trent Humphrey. The Jays Lawn Care Service number two is Jeff Rice, followed by the Ray Ingalls Racing Lazy 8 of Chase Hatton. Driving the 27L tonight will be Michael Easley. Behind him, Charlie McDonald in 79. Robert DeLude in star three. Thomas Dowden out of Frierson, Louisiana in 40. Brent Riddle in 45. Jacob Toomey in T11. And Brad Timone in 41.
That will conclude the hot lap session for your pro mods. The 515, Trent Humphrey. The two of Jeff Rice. The 16, Jason Beasley. The Lazy 8, Chase Hatton. The 27L, Michael Easley. The T11, Jacob Toomey. The 41, Brad Timone. The star three of Robert DeLude. The 79 of Charlie McDonald. The 45 of Britt Riddle. Entering the speedway now, your limited modified hot laps. First car out, the runner up at the Why Not Street Stock Nationals, the C7, that is Corey Neal Jr. Behind him in 88M, that's Joshua Martin. Behind Martin in the CDR Shocks, number 18, that is Stephen Hogan. Behind Hogan, Brian Matthews in 712 from Longview, Texas. Rolling out of turn number two, your 2021 Louisiana State Dirt Track champion for the modif for the limited modifieds. That is Adam Roy out of Texarkana, Texas. Behind Roy in the Jesus Saves 11. That is Troy Keith out of Benton, Louisiana. Behind Keith, Chris Shaw in 55S. Excuse me, Chris Hall in 55S. Behind Hall in the 561, that is Kevin Simpson and the Rock and Roll Whataburger 561. Cody Tupper in 23, Josh Bauckham in 25, Matthew Thompson in 54 D. Ricky Burke in 55 and Brent Tidwell in 20. Also, Jimbo Clayton and J3. That will conclude the hot lap session for your limited modifies. Extra on the back straightaway, the 11 of Troy Keith, the 55S of Chris Hall, the 25, Josh Bauckham, 88M of Joshua Martin, the, fifth, the 561 of Kevin Simpson, the 23 of Cody Tupper, the 54T of Matthew Thompson, the 20 of Brent Tidwell, the 55 of Ricky Burke, the J3 of Jimbo Clayton, the 18 of Stephen Hogan, the C7 of Corey Neal Jr., the two of Adam Roy, and the 712 of Brian Matthews. Rolling onto the speedway now are your front wheel drive four cylinder hot laps. First car on the track in 05, that is Luke DuPont. Behind him is Jack DuPont, his brother in 06. 25 is Hunter Armstrong out of Blanchard, Louisiana, followed by Mikey Brunker in 77 and 777 out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Daniel Thompson in 17T out of Mesquite, Texas. Followed by the K-8 of Logan Hughes out of Wascom. The 2P is Aubra Parker. Followed by the 94 of Cullum Dittmore out of Wascom, Texas. The 4A is Austin Warner. 46 of Jackson Gallagher and 22 of Connor Cook. So group qualifying just about set here for the Summit Racing Equipment United States Modified Touring Series fueled by Casey's. 
Drivers in Simpson Performance Products Heat Race number one being called out of the staging area. The quickest four qualifiers will invert on the front two rows of their respective heat races, so the fastest qualifier starts fourth from there. Passing points apply throughout the evening. The top eight redraw for the Seabisma Graphics Pole Award for the A Main as we roll out flight number one here. Terry Phillips out of Springfield, Missouri, the Andes Frozen Custard 75. Brandon Givens out of Wichita, Kansas, the Gressel Racing 2G off into turn number one. There's Tanner Mullins in the top five last night at RPM Speedway, the Mel Hamilton Ford 02. Wichita, Kansas, behind him, Jackson, Wyoming's Chris Clark, the grain handler 8C. The Cutting Technologies 85, that is Jason Good out of Watertown, South Dakota. There's the Muirhead Motorsports entry, that's Gregory Muirhead out of Maybank, Texas in the 22. Kyle Beard out of Truman, Arkansas. The man Motorsports number 86 with us this evening. Rolling just past the flag stand. Billy Jack Brutchen scheduled to be in this group as well as Kevin Peters and Colton Horner. So three more drivers here in group qualifying for Simpson Performance Products Heat Race number one. You can see Colton Horner rolling Outside of turns three and four, the Houston, Texas racer, the Houston Specialty Products number 56, making his way to the racetrack for qualifying here in Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. So still waiting on Billy Jack Brutchen and Kevin Peters here for group qualifying in fastest four drivers invert on the front two rows of their respective heat races here tonight. Top 12 in passing points go to the A main. Top eight redraw for the Seabisma Graphics Pole Award. Everybody else. Has to work out of the real racing wheels, B mains, to lock in tonight's 10,000 to win. Summit Racing Equipment, USMTS modified A main fuel by Casey's here for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash as group number one goes on the clock here from Arklatex Speedway. So as we go on the clock here in group number one, Kevin Peters and Billy Jack Brutchen will both, both turn in no times here this evening in group number one as they were late to the staging area. qualifying here for Simpson Performance Products in race number one, Tanner Mullen so far. Quick is there on the opening lap, 15.261 seconds. He's going to prove that to a 14 at 999 second lap for the 02. Harry Phillips improved his second lap as well to 15.274. Two, three, five. So your four quickest qualifiers unofficially 14.999 seconds for Tanner Mullins, 15.235 for Kyle Beard, 15.274 for Terry Phillips, and Gregory Muirhead at 15.544. Your four quickest qualifiers. So unofficially, Gregory Muirhead and Terry Phillips will line up on row number one as Tanner Mullins, the only driver to break into the 14 second bracket at 14.999 seconds was your quickest qualifier in Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. Drivers in fast shafts heat race number two begin to make their way out of the staging area and onto the racetrack. The driver that wears the Risco Industries points leader spoiler will lead them out onto the racetrack. Woodward, Oklahoma's Derek Ramirez, the Boom Test Well Service 4R, fresh off his win last night at the RPM Speedway. Behind him, Chris Kratzer, out of Wichita, Kansas, the Wichita Tire and Alignment, number 19R. Then it's Waxahachie, Texas racer Dylan Pike, the Northside RV Resort 6 star. He rolls off into turn number one. Mason Williams qualifying in this group out of Folk, Arkansas, the Charlie Williams painting 24W. Just ahead of Fido Gallardo out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, the Gallardo Construction G17. Chris Hennigan in this group as well, the Panel Trust 16 out of Marshall, Texas. He'll roll off through turns one and two ahead of last night's third place finisher. Lucas shot out of Chatfield, Minnesota. The shot's hardwood floor 69. There's Lance Murray out of Imperial, California. The CT floor coverings 19 SB. And Casey Fowler, Fowler out of Grand Saline, Texas. 
the Texas Auto Locomotive Solutions 64. So working through qualifying group number two, fast shafts heat race number two now on the clock here at the Arc with Tech Speedway. Some trouble for Mason Williams. He will for gas up, stay in the throttle, jump back out and kind of make a shot here for his qualifying effort. Derek Ramirez atop the heap on lap number one as the times begin to Off here on line timing and scoring. It'll be 15.551 seconds for Fido Gallardo. Derek Ramirez, second quick. Lance Mari, Dylan Pike right now, your four quickest qualifiers as we work through this second group. So your top four qualifiers, Fido Gallardo, 15 up. 475, 15475 for Fido Gallardo. Derek Ramirez, 15.592. Lance Mari, 15757. And Chris Hennigan, 15813. Your four quickest qualifiers. That unofficially puts Chris Hennigan and Lance Mari on row number one, a fast shafts heat race number two, as Fido Gallardo turned in a quick time of 15.475 seconds. So Fido Gallardo turning in quick time in Fast Shafts Heat Race number two. Edelbrock Heat Race number three rolling out of the staging lane as well. We'll introduce those drivers to you as they turn in their qualifying times here for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. Jake Gallardo will lead him out on the racetrack. Fido's son next to qualify here out of Las Cruces, New Mexico in the Gallardo Construction J17. Behind Jake Gallardo, it'll be T.J. Tolleson. Tolleson racing out of Bevins, Texas. He's in the JT's Trucking 38T. Then we will find Manuel Williams Jr. He is behind the wheel of the Charlie Williams painting at number 24M out of Folk, Arkansas. Then it's the thriller, Kate Dillard out of Robilene, Louisiana. The SNS Fishing and Rental number 97 rolls just past the flag stand ahead of Denimus Springs, Louisiana racer Tommy Cannon. He's in the Arnold Welding and Fabrication, number 718. Triple four of Austin Carter joining this qualifying group out of Alvarado, Texas. So Austin Carter in the 44. There's Kenny Gaddis out of Diana, Texas. He is in the Transmissions Unlimited. Number two, G. Rodney Sanders in this qualifying group. The Happy Texan behind the wheel of the Wichita Tank Racing, number 20. There's the Lobo Racing 4W of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Tyler Wolf. So Tyler Wolf in this qualifying group. Final driver on the track as we turn him loose in qualifying for Edelbrock Heat Race, number three. So Edelbrock Heat Race, number three, now on the clock here at Arklatech Speedway. Third of five groups to qualify here tonight for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. Rocky Sanders had a fast car last night at the RPM Speedway in Randall, Texas. Nine cut short early after some trouble with Chris Prancer with six laps. And turn at number four. Loops it around and we'll go under a quick caution. So most drivers able to record. 0.214 seconds. Kate Dillard was second quick, 15.295. Rodney Sanders and Manuel Williams Jr. The four quickest cars there as we completed lap number one. One more qualifying lap for the drivers here in Edelbrock Heat Race number three. So Gallardo, Dillard, Sanders, and Williams, the four quickest on lap number one. Tyler Wolf was fifth quick. TJ Tollison, Tommy Cannon, no time recorded for Austin Carter or Kenny Gaddis there, but we will get those times to you once they become official here for group qualifying in Edelbrock Heat Race number three. We mentioned Rodney Sanders, a tough run last night at the RPM Speedway, started deep in the field, started 20th on the grid, was nearing the top five when he was taken out of competition last night at RPM, so looking to turn it around here tonight at Arkla Tech Speedway in that Wichita Tank Racing number 20. The green light blinks back on here for group qualifying in Edelbrock in race number three.
So top four staying the same there as we complete qualifying. J17, Jake Gallardo, 15.214, 15.214 for Jake Gallardo. Cade Dillard, 15.274. Rodney Sanders, 15.353. And Manuel Williams, the second, 15.464 for the 24M, so unofficially Manuel Williams the second, and Rodney Sanders will be on road number one of Edelbrock Heat 3 as Jake Gallardo turned quick time in that group, just like his dad Fido did the group before, 15.214 seconds for the J17 of Jake Gallardo. Gallardo, Dillard, Sanders, and Williams, the four quickest qualifiers in Edelbrock Heat race number three. MSD Heat Race number four, the next set of drivers that will be on the clock here at the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash from the Arklatex Speedway. Set to meet and greet drivers here in MSD Heat Race number four. Four quickest qualifiers, in inverting on the front two rows. Driver that will lead them out of the racetrack comes to you from Raymond, Mississippi. The Joel's Auto Sales Triple Four. That is Brooks Strength, your 2021 King of America. We'll lead him down the front straight away. Behind him, it'll be Dustin Swords in a Rochester, Minnesota. He's in the Ford Metro Inc. number 19. Behind him, Tyler Davis out of Hayesville, Kansas, the Freight Logistics 65. There's Zach Vanderbeek at a new Sharon Island, the Casey's 33Z. Rolling off into turn number one, Nathan Smith as well, the RVB Transport number 88 from Anthony, New Mexico. Sean Gaddis will qualify in this group as well, the Transmissions Unlimited number seven along with Steven Gaddis. He's behind the wheel of the number two S out of Henderson, Texas. Carlos Amata Jr. in this qualifying group, the Hacienda Mechanical 65 exit of El Paso, Texas, and Pine Island, Minnesota's JT Wasman, the Med City Collision 51W. As we go great here for group qualifying at MSD Heat 4. So MSD Heat Race number four, now under the green flag here at the Arklatex Speedway. Working on group qualifying here to go three wide. And one more group following MSD Heat Race number four. 46 drivers checked in for the night's 10,000 ahead of it. Night number three of four this weekend for the Stars and Stars the US NPS the first lap times click across the MRP, live timing and scoring. First few times, second across, 15.255 seconds for Dustin Sorensen. Brooks Strength turns in a 15.480 on lap number two, Tyler Davis, Carlos Amata Jr. Looked to be the four quickest. Now Vanderbeek will jump into that mix. He'll bump Amata out of an invert spot. And that will do it for qualifying in MSD Heat Race number four. Quick qualifier, Dustin Sorensen, 15.255 seconds. Brooks Strength, second quick, 15.480. Zach Vanderbeek, 15.533 and 15.535 for Tyler Davis, your fourth quickest qualifier. So unofficially, Tyler Davis and Zach Vanderbeek will be on road number one as Dustin Sorensen turned in quick time in MSD Heat Race number four at 15.255 seconds. Next group rolling out of the racetrack. Final flight of qualifying here this evening. Jake Tim will lead him out. The Herco Mind Over Metal 49 Jr. out of Winona, Minnesota. Behind him, Sheridan, Wyoming's Bart Taylor. He's in the Taco John's 369. There's Kurt Myers out of Cameron, Wisconsin. The H&E Ready Mix 1M. Along with Mark Smith out of Anthony, New Mexico. The RVP Transport number 2SS. There's the Collins Brothers towing of St. Cloud, number 60 of Dan Ebert out of Lakeshore, Minnesota, along with Jason Ingalls, the Mr. Plumber, number 12, Longview, Texas. Driver that sits second in the national point standings, rolls just past the flag stand. Tucson, Arizona's Jake O'Neill, the Red Eye Radiator, zero, along with Jason Hughes out of Salina, Oklahoma, the Murphy Oil Company, number 12. Final driver on the track out of Claremore, Oklahoma, Big Daddy, Joe Duvall, the DriveWFX.com, number 91. As we turn them loose in the final set of qualifying here, BP Racing Fuels, Heat Race number five, now on the clock here at Arklatex Speedway.
Jake Tim. Only driver to break into the 14 second bracket other than Tanner Mullins tonight. 14.936 seconds for Jake Tim. So Jake Tim inside of 15 seconds. Jason Hughes second quick 15.201, 15.298 for Jake O'Neill. And Mark Smith at 15.480 seconds. There you have it, your four quickest qualifiers. The only driver other than Tanner Mullins to break into the 14 second bracket. 14.936 seconds for Jake Tim, your quickest qualifier in VP Racing Fuels Heat 5. Jason Hughes, second quick at 15.201 seconds. Jake O'Neill, 15.298, and Mark Smith, 15.480. Unofficially putting Mark Smith and Jake O'Neill on road number one of VP Racing Fuels Heat Race number five as Jake Tim turned in quick time in that group at 14.936 seconds. That will set up your heat races tonight for the Summit Racing Equipment United States Modified Touring Series fueled by Casey's. And with that, qualifying now done. Heat races will be up next. In the meantime, we'll turn it over to Colin here as we get set for opening ceremonies from the Arklatex Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Arklatex Speedway here for the USMTS Cajun Clash. It is now time to go to the Lord in prayer and sing the Star Spangled Banner. So we ask that you would please rise and gentlemen, remove your hats. Let's pray together. Father God, we want to thank you for your mercy and your grace toward us, Lord, and just allowing us to come and gather tonight to watch some racing here at the dirt track. We thank you for bringing us here safely. And, Lord, we praise you most of all for the glorious gospel that you have presented for us. Lord, that we have turned away from you. Lord, we've sinned against you. But you created a way, Lord, to send your son to die in our place, to punishment, the punishment that we deserve upon himself. And, Lord, that if we repent of our sin, Lord, that you are merciful to those who call on your name. We pray tonight, Lord, that that truth would be foremost in our thoughts. And, Lord, that you would bless these drivers, allow them to remain safe as they compete for us tonight. And everybody here would have a safe night. It's in Christ's name we pray for his glory. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we've hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right, race fans, it's time to kick off the ninth annual Cajun Clash. 
Entering the speedway now will be heat race number one for your factory stocks on the pole in J27 out of Marshall, Texas. Gotti Case to his outside, also out of Mar Marshall, Texas, in 4V will be Doug Vick Jr. Inside a row two out of Edgewood, Texas, in 13, that's Jeff Hammett to his outside, Cody Wright in 4C out of Oil City, Louisiana. Inside of row three, 34P, it'll be Peyton Donnery with Stony Duke is in one to his outside out of Robeline, Louisiana. Inside of row four out of Mansfield, Louisiana in five, that'll be Frank Canazaro to his outside out of Mooringsport, Louisiana in R45, Randy Cox. And rounding out the field starting ninth will be Austin Hall in 13X out of Kilgore, Texas. We will be going eight laps and the top five cars will transfer to the eight. Looks like we're gonna roll in the top side just a bit before we get heat race action started. We wanna have the best possible racetrack we can to put on a show for these national modified guys who traveled here to compete for $10,000 to win. Your factory stocks will be running for $700 to win tonight and we have 26 of them checked in. So we'll set the lineup once again. On the pole will be the J27. That's Scotty Case to his outside in 4V. Doug Vick, Jeff Hammett in 13. Cody Wright is scheduled to be outside of row two in 4C. Daughtery in 4P. Stoney Dubois in one. Frank Canazaro in five. Randy Cox in 45. And Austin Hall in 13X. That's going to be Austin Hale in 13X. So we're going eight laps. Top five will transfer. Case and Vic will lead us to green. Case going to get a good jump, and so does Hammett. Doug Vic's going to slap the wall on the front straightaway in 4B. So Scotty Case will get the jump. Jeff Hammett in a second. Doug Vic's got problems after making contact with the front straightaway wall. They're three wide for third. Daughtery, Vic, and Canazaro, three wide. Push from Canazaro, here comes Dubois to the inside, trying to take away the fifth and final transfer spot. J27 gets a little bit high, he'll turn off the cushion, use the momentum to stretch his lead out over Hammett. So your top five, Case, Hammett, Vic, Daughtery, and Canazaro, your five transferring cars as of now. Two laps down, six to go for the J27 of Scotty Case. Here comes Randy Cox looking to the inside of Stoney Newton to take away the sixth spot. New boy's going to maintain that position for now. Peyton Daughtery trying to win the inside of the trying to take away the third spot. At the J27 and the 13 have stretched their way away from the field. We'll see halfway this time as Jeff Hammond has smoked. And Jeff Hammett's up in flames in 13. Hammett to the infield, car is on fire. Safety crew rushing to his car, trying to extinguish the flame within. Meanwhile, we're staying green. Here comes Randy Cox to the inside of Stoney Newboys, trying to take away the fifth and final transfer. He gets loose. Newboys looking to the and here comes Hale. 13X of Hale looking to the outside of Dubois. He's going to try to take away the fifth and final spot. As J27 sees two to go this time. You got the 4B of Doug Vick. Peyton Daughtery in 34P. Here comes Frank Hennesaro to his inside. He'll take third spot. Randy Cox in 45 holds fifth for now. Daughtery going to give a bump in the bumper of the five of Hennesaro. As Johnny K sees the white flag this time. So Case, Vic, Canazaro, Daughtery, and Cox 
As of right now, but Michael Hale there. Coming out of for your heat race one winner. That's going to be the 77 of Scotty Case. Down the back straightaway, we got a battle for one for the fifth and final transfer spot. 13 out. Austin Hale looking to the end of the 45 R of Cox. Cox going to use the outside momentum and take the fifth and final transfer spot. So your top five, the J27 of Scotty Case, the 4V of Doug Vick Jr., the 5 of Frank Cannizzaro, the 34P of Peyton Daughtery, and taking the fifth and final transfer spot, 5R of Randy Cox. Heartbreaker there for the 13 of Jeff Hammett, who burst into flames while running in the second spot. He ran number two will line up like this. On the pole out of Robilene, Louisiana in 77, that will be Tyler Dubois. To his outside, out of Ashdown, Arkansas in 17, Alex Turner. Inside a row two on the inside, Justin Sales in 25S. To his outside, the, Jeff Race, the Jeff's Racing Products, number 40 out of Houghton, Louisiana. That is Jeff Lewis. Inside a row three, the 2021 Louisiana State Dirt Track Champion in the factory stocks. The Superior Bar and Grill, number 12, that is Bo Perry. To the outside of Bo. Son of the J27 who won heat race number one, that is the C7 a Vic Case, not seeing Vic out there. To the inside of row four, Clint Shirtliff in 54X out of Falk, Arkansas. To his outside out of Ashdown, Arkansas in 15, that's Austin Turner. Dalton Dubois in 55 will bring up the rear. Once again, a top five to the A. Tyler Dubois and Alex Turner will lead us to green. Turner will take the lead, and here comes Jeff Lewis in 40. How about the Jeff Racing Products number 40? Jeff Lewis looking to take the, back, the lead down the back straight away. Here comes Jeff Lewis on the top, Turner on the bottom. Lewis will have the lead, and he'll lead lap one. Here comes Bo Perry looking to the outside of Turner in 12. He's gonna get a run, here comes the 12. He'll get around the 17, take away the second spot. Brothers Alex. And Austin Turner about a new battle for third. As top Dalton Dubois of 55 is taking the fifth and final transfer spot. Here comes Bo Perry going after Jeff Lewis for the racing lead. Perry looking on the inside. He's going to sling it down into turn three. Perry through the middle. Lewis on the outside. Lewis is going to maintain the lead for now. Side by side between the 40 and the 12 brothers, the Turner brothers in 17 and 15 continue to battle for the third spot. Here comes Clint Shirtliff in 54. Spot from Dalton Dubois in 55. This time by Bo Perry has the lead in the line. Pair of laser race cars battling for heat race number two. Shirtliff looking to the inside of Dubois trying to take away the fifth spot. Here comes Perry on the inside. Lewis still using the outside. They're gonna give each other space and Jeff Lewis will lead this lap. Lewis and 40 up on the cushion, gonna bounce off, try to get some momentum, but here comes Perry to his inside. Smoke pouring out of the 17 of Alex Turner, his brother Austin Turner trying to find a way around him. As Bo Perry sees two to go this time. Clint Shirtliff and 54X will take away the fourth spot from Austin Turner, and Dalton Newboys is gonna try to take away the fifth and final transfer down the back straightaway. The 55 and the 15 side by side for the fifth and final transfer spot out of this heat race. Newboys gonna throw a slide job as Bo Perry sees the white flag. So it's Perry, Lewis, Turner, Shirtlip, and Newboys your top five. Austin Turner trying to fight back to the inside of Tyler Dubois and try to get into the A-Main through the heat. Bo Perry in the laser race car, house car, will win heat race number two. So your top five cars, Bo Perry in 12 is your winner. Jeff Lewis in 40 comes home second. The 17 out of Ashdown, Arkansas. Alex Turner comes home third. Clint Shirtliff in 54X comes home fourth. And your fifth and final transferring car, the 55 of Dalton Dubois. Rolling towards the speedway now will be heat race number three for your factory stocks. Once again, this race will be eight laps and the top five will transfer to the A. 
On the pole, the laser race car number 27. That'll be Joshua Greenwald out of Shreveport, Louisiana. To his outside, also a laser race car. That'll be the eight of Little John Tuggle. Inside of row two, the number two is Rodney Howell out of Pineville, Louisiana. To his outside will be his son, C.J. Howell, in 34. Inside of row three, David Bosbury, the youngster, in double zero. With to his outside, Lonnie Morgan in 69 out of Sarepta, Louisiana. And your fourth and final row will consist of Gary Harvin out of Falk, Arkansas, in 25. And to his outside, Josh Daughtery out of Keithville, Louisiana, in 10X. Green Walton Tuggle will lead us down the back straight away. They'll take us to green, a pair of laser race cars. Green Walton's going to get a good jump. Tuggle's going to give him a jump, give him a good push off into turn two. As Tuggle's going to continue to fight for the outside, Rodney Howell in CJ's number two. And CJ is running the 34 tonight. Rodney goes right, throw a slider. Tuggle will maintain second for now. So it's Tuggle, Howell, and Harvin. Tuggle and Rodney Howell going to go side by side down the back straightaway. Little John Tuggle up top. Rodney Howell going to throw a slide job. He'll take away the second spot. Here comes Gary Harvin digging on the bottom in 25. He'll look to the inside of C.J. Howell in 34, trying to take away the fourth spot. And here comes Rock. Here comes C.J. Howell to the inside of Little John Tuggle. C.J. Howell going to leave just enough room, but he will take the third spot on that lap. Here comes Tuggle back to his outside. So it's Greenwald, Howell, Howell, Tuggle, and Harvin, your top five. C.J. Howell goes trying to throw it to the outside of his dad, Rodney, but Rodney's going to have enough momentum to keep him at bay for now. Halfway this time, Josh Greenwalt in 27, smooth sailing out front as a two and 34 of Howells continue to battle for the second spot. Here comes Lil John Tuggle and eight, gonna try to fight back and take away the third spot once again. As Gary Harvin's digging on the bottom in 25, here comes a double zero of David Bosbury, gonna try to take away the fifth and final transfer spot. 10X of Josh Daughtery is also there, trying to throw his name into contention. Coming out of four this time, he'll see two to go. That's a 27 of Joshua Greenwald. C.J. Howell going to give his dad a shot in the bumper. He's going to look to the inside. Here comes C.J. Howell to the inside of Rodney. They'll go side by side down the back straightaway. C.J. going to go to the bottom. Rodney's through the middle. Sliding up. They're going to give him space. And the white flag is out for Greenwald this time. Here comes CJ to the inside of Rodney once again, and Little John Tuggles trying to capitalize. Coming off the top out of turn four, your winner, Joshua Greenwald in 27. CJ Howell in 34, the two of Rodney Howell, the eight of John Tuggle, and the 25 of Gary Harvin, your top five. So Simpson Performance Products Heat Race Number One rolling out of staging for the USMTS Modifieds Heat Race Number One will line up like this. Gregory Muirhead will be front row on the inside. The 22 out of Maybank, Texas. The Muirheads outside will be Terry Phillips out of Springfield, Missouri, in the 75. Row two on the inside, Kyle Beard, the 86 out of Truman, Arkansas, alongside Wichita, Kansas racer Tanner Mullins in the 02. Row three to the inside, Colton Horner out of Houston, Texas, the 56. Alongside the 85 of Jason Good out of Watertown, South Dakota. Row four to the inside will be Brandon Gillins out of Wichita, Kansas. The 2G alongside Chris Clark in the 8C. Clark out of Jackson, Wyoming. And your final two starters both failing to turn in qualifying times. In qualifying a little bit earlier on. 
Billy Jack Brutchen in the 78 out of Gladewater, Texas, and Kevin Peters out of Hallsville, Texas in the 21. Trying to get the last couple of cars lined up correctly. We'll get the 8C of Chris Clark to the outside of the fourth row. Billy Jack Brutchen fifth row inside alongside Kevin Peters. So Simpson Performance Products heat race number one slated for eight laps around the Arklatex Speedway. Gregory Muirhead on the front row of this one. The Maybank Texas racer has Springfield, Missouri veteran Terry Phillips to his outside on the front row. Kyle Beard, Tanner Mullins, row two. Colton Horner, Jason Good, row three. Brandon Givens, Chris Clark, row four. And Brutchen and Peters. That's how they line up for Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. Start out of turn number four, Green Shaft comes here on your opening race here at Arklatex Speedway. Harry Phillips jumps out in initial command. They'll look to run away and hide here on the opening lap. Your head files into the second place spot. Tanner Mullen's going to challenge down the inside of the 22 here as we complete lap number one. Opening lap scored with Terry Phillips out in front. Your head still in the number two spot as Tanner Mullins runs in third down the back straightaway. Kyle Beard in the fourth place spot. He'll take a look down the inside of Tanner Mullins, who's kissing the wall down the front straightaway. Tanner's right rear quarter panel slapping the front straightaway wall last time out of turn number four. Meanwhile, Kyle Beard slips a bit high on exit turn number two. That tightens the 85 of Jason Good down to his inside. And Colton Warner to his back bumper. Those three race for the fourth place spot down into turns one and two. Warner was over the cushion for a minute in the 56. They'll lose wholesale track position to the 85 and 86 who continue to wheel side by side in the race for fourth. Halfway through Simpson Performance Products heat race number one, four in, four to go. Terry Phillips rolling out in front, Gregory Muirhead in second. Tanner Mullen still runs in the third place spot. Kyle Beard, Jason Good, that's the top five. Bolton Horner in sixth, seventh is Billy Jack Crutch and eighth is Brandon Givens. Ninth is Chris Clark and 10th, Kevin Peters. Two laps to go off of turn four here in Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. Tanner Mullins getting racing now in the final couple of laps on Gregory Muirhead. Mullins down the inside, Muirhead with the momentum to pull back around the 0-2. Mullins attacks down the inside, he'll throw the slide job for second. White flag will come to the air, one to go. A good one going for the runner-up spot here on the final circuit as Terry Phillips has checked out here in heat race number one. Off the turn number four, TP going to get it done. Terry Phillips wins Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. Checkered flag out over the field. Gregory Muirhead rounds out the... One second to Tanner Mullins and your heat race winner to Springfield, Missouri. He's in the GRT by Phillips, Durham powered. And he's for their manufacturing and Midwest Sheet Metal 75, Terry Phillips, your winner in Simpson Performance Products heat race number one. Fast Shafts heat race number two. We'll see Chris Hennigan on the front row. The Marshall, Texas racer in the 16 starts to the inside of row number one. Lance Murray to his outside of Imperial California in the 19 SB. Row two on the inside, your current national points leader, Derek Ramirez out of Woodward, Oklahoma. The 4R will start third with Fido Gallardo to the outside, the G17 out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Row three to the inside will be Lucas Schott out of Chatfield, Minnesota. The 69 will start Fifth, and to his outside, Dylan Pike out of Waxahachie, Texas, in the sixth star. Row four to the inside, Mason Williams out of Folk, Arkansas, the 24W, alongside Chris Kratzer out of Wichita, Kansas, in the 19R. Your final starter is Casey Fowler out of Grand Saline, Texas. The 64 will start ninth here in Fast Shaft Seat Race number two. Ready to get to it in Fast Shaft Seat Race number two. Chris Hennigan and Lance Murray on row number one, eight times around Arklatex Speedway, and we're green off of turn four. 
Good initial start for Derek Ramirez. Jumps down to the inside of Chris Hennigan. He'll find some traction as well. And Ramirez will grab the lead from the 16 of Hennigan down the back straightaway. Vito Gallardo quickly up into the third place spot. Lucas Schott working down the inside of Lance Mari for fourth. Ramirez, the leader on lap number one. Here comes Gallardo. He'll find the same bit of traction Ramirez did along the bottom side at turn number two there on lap number one. Grab the second place spot away from Chris Hennigan as they're three wide. Mari in the middle, shot along the inside, still three wide. Now Mari will slide up to take the top line away from Chris Hennigan. Hennigan going to slip back into the fifth place spot. He started inside of row number one. Now Lucas Shot will slide on past the 19 SP of Lance Mari for third. So shot into third by Mari. He'll drift a bit too high on exit turn number two, though, and Mari will say thank you very much. He'll grab the third place spot back into turns three and four here with four in, four to go in fast shafts heat race number two. Halfway through Fast Shafts Heat Race number two, Derek Ramirez out on top, Vito Gallardo in second, Lance Mori, Lucas Schott, Chris Hennigan. That's the top five, Mason Williams in sixth, race for seventh is the screen between Kratzer and Pike as Casey Fowler rounds out the running order. Laps clicking away, two to go this time by Vito Gallardo. Closing in, though, on the 4R here in the final couple laps. Vito Gallardo making a run for the top spot now. Ramirez fresh off that win last night at the RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas. His fifth of the season was enough to put him back in the points lead over Jake O'Neill. And now you'll see the white flag wave. One lap to go here in Fast Shabs Heat Race number two. Final time through turns three and four to the checkered flag. Tarek Ramirez claims fast shaft heat race number two. Checkered out. Top three finishers. Lance Mari rounds out the podium of heat race number two. Second goes to Fido Gallardo. And your heat race winner, he's out of Woodward, Oklahoma, the Boom Test Well Service, Redbone Fishing and Rental, Raw Truck Wash, Coda Services, and Woodward of Steel. Number four are Derek Ramirez, your winner of Fast Shafts Heat Race number two. Edelbrock Heat Race number three, we'll see Manuel Williams the second on the front row of this one, the Folk Arkansas racer in the 24M. His outside, Rodney Sanders at a happy Texas car 20 will start on the outside of row number one. Row two to the inside, Robeline, Louisiana's Kate Dillard, the thriller in the 97. He'll start second row on the inside. His outside, Jake Gallardo out of Las Cruces, New Mexico in the J-17. Denham Springs, Louisiana racer Tommy Cannon, the 718. He'll start third row on the inside. And Tyler Wolf will be his outside, the 4W out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Row four to the inside, Kenny Gaddis racing out of Diana, Texas, the 2G. Is outside T.J. Tollison out of Bevins, Texas, the 38T. Your final starter comes to you from Alvarado, Texas, the 44. That is Austin Carter. And that's how we line up here for Edelbrock Heat Race number three. Lights are out. William Sanders, row number one to the green, and we're underway. Up the hill goes Williams, and Rodney Sanders will go racing on by into the lead. Williams sliding way across the banking. The door open, and Sanders grabs the top spot on lap number one. And Will Williams the second up and over the cushion once again in turn number two. Jake Gallardo will race by Wolf, and Dillard going to try to do the same. Wolf going to dive deep into turns three and four alongside the 24M down the front straightaway. Dillard on the back bumper of Williams as well. Great three-car race. Going into turns one and two. Wolf. Going to slide up to take the top line away, but Williams will keep the momentum up along the top side to hang on for third. Comes Tommy Cannon along the bottom as well. Three wide nearly down the front straightaway. And will Williams is second. He's going to see Tyler Wolf skate right across his nose. They're going to stay three wide down there as Cannon works down to the inside. Caution, though, will come out for the 97 of Kate Dillard. So trouble for Kate Dillard over the banking in turn number two is going to bring us under the caution with three laps scored. Rodney Sanders with the lead. 
Jake Guyard in second, Manuel Williams the second, Tyler Wolf, those two battling for the third place spot. Tommy Cannon had rolled up into that battle for third as well. So good three car race between Williams, Wolf, and Cannon just ahead of the caution. As we try to get the rest of the field to double up here, they will do so. Lights will go out. Three in, five to go in Edelbrock Heat Race number three. So not quite through, halfway through Edelbrock Heat Race number three. Back underway out of turn number four. Rodney Sanders will lead the field down into turns one and two. Manuel Williams is second in that runner-up spot. Here comes Jake Gallardo along the top side as well. Jake Gallardo rolling along the cushion off of turn number four. He'll find the wall, though, on exit turn number four, and Tyler Wolf will work down to the inside of the J-17. Jake Gallardo, Tyler Wolf now exchanging jabs for that third place spot as we got trouble down in turns one and two. Tommy Cannon now rolled to a stop in turn number two. So four in, four to go. Trouble for the 718 of Tommy Cannon. Tough break there as he was in contention in a top five spot in that 718. So trouble for Cannon. Lineup quickly takes shape with four in, four to go. Rodney Sanders with the lead. Emmanuel Williams is second in the runner-up spot. Jake Gallardo, Tyler Wolf, and now Kate Dillard make up the top five. Try to get Tommy Cannon in line here down the back straightaway, and we'll try to go lights out. Four in, four to go. Edelbrock Heat race number three, ready to come back to green. Sanders on point of the restart, and we're back underway. Jake Gallardo continues to try to keep it rolling along the top side of the racetrack. He'll have the run down the back straightaway to Manuel Williams, the seconds outside. Five and three to go. Rodney Sanders still out on top. Manuel Williams, the second in the runner-up spot. Jake Gallardo back to the outside once. The Arc Latex Speedway, those two, pretty good battle for the third place spot now with two to go. Wolf will throw the slider, but Jake Gallardo will just turn underneath the 4W down the back straightaway. White flag will come to the air out in front. Manuel Williams, the second, has a run at Rodney Sanders here on the final lap. Sanders hits the marks along the top side of the racetrack. We'll see if Williams can try anything into turns three and four. Checkers in the air. Edelbrock heat race number three will go to Rodney Sanders. So your top three finishers in Edelbrock Heat race number three, Jake Gallardo finishes in third. Second goes to Manuel Williams, the second. And your heat race winner is at a happy Texas in the MB Customs Hatfield Powered Wichita Tank Racing Army Contractors, Mesilla Valley Transportation and Paulson Rock Products number 20, Rodney Sanders, your winner in Edelbrock Heat race number three. MSD Heat Race number four. Lineup's going to look like this. Tyler Davis will be front row on the inside. The Hayesville, Kansas racer in the 65. New Sharon, Iowa. Zach Vanderbeek is outside the 33Z. Row two to the inside. Brooks Strength out of Raymond, Mississippi. The triple four in his outside. Dustin Sorensen out of Rochester, Minnesota, the 19. Row three to the inside. It's Carlos Zamata Jr. out of El Paso, Texas, the 65X. Alongside Anthony, New Mexico's Nathan Smith in the 88. Row four to the inside will be J.T. Wasman out of Pine Island, Minnesota, the 51W. Alongside Diana, Texas racer Sean Gaddis in the seven. Steven Gaddis will be your final starter in MSD Heat Race number four. Steven out of Henderson, Texas in the 2S. So it looks like Carlos Amata Jr. has pulled out the 54 machine. So he has pulled out Carlos Amata Sr.'s ride. So... Amada going to a backup car here in MSD heat race number four. So Amada now 54 for this heat race. Therefore, we have to adjust the back half of the lineup in this one as Amada using a backup car. He'd already qualified in the 65X car, so he has to drop to the tail of the field. We cross Nathan Smith to the inside of row number three. 
Wasman moves up to the outside of the third row. Everybody else adjusts accordingly, and we get to an MSD heat race number four underway here at Arkla Tech Speedway. Two by two in the top four here on lap number one down the back straightaway. Brooks Strength on the inside of the racetrack. Tyler Davis up top. Lap number one will go to the triple four. Brooks Strength. Strength leading the opening circuit. Zach Vanderbeek in the second place spot now as he'll work by Tyler Davis. Dustin Sorensen in fourth. Carlos Samata Jr. moving off the back of the pack. Use that backup car. He's quickly into the top five in the 54. So Carlos Amata Jr. off the back of the field into the top five just behind Sorensen. Now he'll challenge down to the inside of the 19. Good race in there as those two close in on the 65 at Davis as well. Sorensen knows he needs to go. He'll work down to the inside of the 65, but he'll have to get on the binders. That will allow Amata to race by the 19 of Sorensen. Good three-car race for third. Works off a of turn number four here at the cross flag. Four in, four to go. Four in, four to go. Carlos Samata Jr. Oh, Pops ride might be a good one. He'll roll up into the top three now. He races by Tyler Davis. He might just need to stay in that 54 for the rest of the weekend. He's into the top three now by Sorensen and Davis. Zach Vanderbeek still runs in the second place spot as Brooks Strength has the field pretty well handled here in MSD Heat race number four. Two laps to go this time by. So Brooks Strength leading here on the uh, final lap as we'll come around to the white flag. One more lap to go for Strength. Vanderbeek in second. Carlos Samata Jr. in the third place spot. Fourth is Sorensen. Fifth, Davis. Wasmond, Stephen Gaddis, Sean Gaddis, and Smith. That is the field of this one. As we'll see the checkers wave off of turn number four. Brooks Strength will win MSD Heat Race number four. So there you have it, checkers out in the backup car from ninth to third in that one. Carlos Amata Jr. on the final step of the podium. Nice run out of Amata. Second goes to Zach Vanderbeek. But your heat race winner, he's out of Raymond, Mississippi. The stolen racing engine powered MB Customs, Joel's Auto Sales, Direct Auto Parts, Strength Roofing and Siding, Kate Dillard Racing, number triple four. How about it for Brooks Strength, your winner in MSD heat race number four. So VP Racing Fuels Heat Race number five will be the final heat of the night for the Summit Race Equipment United States Modified Touring Series fueled by Casey's. And Mark Smith will line up on the front row of this one, the two double S out of Anthony, New Mexico, to his outside. Driver that now sits second in the national point standings, Tucson, Arizona's Jake O'Neill in the zero. Row two on the inside, Salina, Oklahoma's Jason Hughes. Car 12 will start third with Jake Tim to his outside, the 49 junior out of Winona, Minnesota. Row three on the inside, it's Kurt Myers out of Cameron, Wisconsin, the 1M, alongside Dan Ebert in the 60 out of Lakeshore, Minnesota. Row four to the inside, it's Big Daddy Joe Duvall out of Claremore, Oklahoma, the 91, alongside Bart Taylor out of Sheridan, Wyoming in the 369. And your final starter will be Jason Ingalls out of Longview, Texas, the 12. We'll start shotgun here at VP Racing Fuels, Heat 5. Out comes the green final heat fair for the USMTS Modifieds. Nearly three wide for the lead out of the gate. And this one, Jason Hughes down to the inside of Mark Smith. Side by side there as O'Neill edges into the lead. Now Hughes will work down to the inside of the zero off of turn number four for the top spot. Jason Hughes hustle on the hub of the racetrack. He'll pull alongside O'Neill through turns one and two. O'Neill able to deny him, but Hughes stays right down to the inside off of turn number two. Jason Hughes working the bottom side of the Arklatech Speedway. He'll keep his nose down to the inside of the zero of Jake O'Neill. Jake Tim back in the third place spot. Kurt Myers in fourth, Mark Smith. That's the top five as Jason Hughes now ventures upstairs in car 12. Try to roll the top line around the Arklatech Speedway as we got trouble down in turn number two. So caution out for Dan Ebert and Bart Taylor. The 60 and the 369 come together in turn number two. And the field will be brought under the caution flag with just two laps scored of eight here in VP Racing Fuels Heat 5. Jake O'Neill out to the initial lead, but they have not quite been able 
where he has not quite been able to shake off the 12 of Jason Hughes. Hughes has stayed well within reach of the zero. Jake Tim in the third place spot here early on. Kurt Myers and Mark Smith. That's the top five. Duval and Ingles. The field here, we'll see. It looks like Ebert. His heat race is going to be done. We'll see if Bart Taylor can continue in the Taco John's 369. So Taylor with some damage on the front end of the 369 car. USMTS official Logan Staley taking a look at that car over in turn number two. Looks like he will be given the okay. The field will now double up behind the zero of Jake O'Neill. Jason Hughes elects the outside. He had just ventured up to the outside. He'd run the hub there early on, then rolled to the outside to try to challenge O'Neill, and that's the line that he will select on this restart with two in and six to go in VP Racing Fuels, heat race number five. So Hughes electing the outside. That puts Tim on the inside of row number two. Myers and Smith, here we go. Two in, six to go. Final heat of the night for the USMTS Modifieds, and we're back green. Hughes trying to launch to the outside. O'Neill will shut the door on entry at turn number one, though. Now Jake Tim, he's got something to work with along the inside of the racetrack. He'll grab second away from Jason Hughes. Boy, Tim's found something along the bottom. Will it be enough to challenge O'Neill? O'Neill rolling out in front. Tim working down to the inside. Hughes follows along the bottom as well. Now here comes Kurt Myers. Myers trying to race by Mark Smith. Those two in a battle for the fourth place spot. Just halfway through this one. Four in, four to go. Four in, four to go. Jake Tim pouring the heat to Jake O'Neill. Trying to stay within reach of the zero. He's about two car lengths back down the back straightaway now. He'll drop down the inside of the zero off of turn number four. Five and three to go. Race for the lead getting good out in front of this one. Jason Hughes watches that battle in the third place spot as Myers and Smith round out your top five. Duval, Taylor, and Ingles. That's the rest of the running order now with two to go. Two to go. Jake Tim within distance to be able to strike, but not quite able to pull the trigger. Jason Hughes goes to work back on the outside of the racetrack once again through turns one and two. He'll roll back to the bottom, though, in turns three and four as the field comes around to the white flag. One more lap to go at BP Racing Fuels, heat five. Jake Tim going to lead along the bottom. Hughes still trying the outside back in that third place spot. Into turn number three, though, out of turn number four. Jake O'Neill hangs on to win the final heat here at Arklatex. So there you have it, VP Racing Fuels, heat race number five under the checkered flag. Jason Hughes crosses in the third place spot. Jake Tim takes second, your heat race winner. He's had a Tucson, Arizona, the LG2 race cars, Cornet Lightning engines powered, red eye radiator, Mesilla Valley Transportation, McCartney Welding Services, Rancho Malagro Racing, and Fast Shafts, number zero. Jake O'Neill, your winner in VP Racing Fuels, heat five. Rolling onto the speedway now will be your Pro Mod Heat Race number one on the pole in the Marshall Muffler number 33. That'll be Randy Darlin out of Jefferson, Texas. To his outside, the 45 out of Bowyer City, Louisiana, will be Brent Riddle. Inside of row two, the T11, Jacob Toomey out of Carthage, Texas, with Jason Beasley in the Sinla RV Center 16 to his outside. Inside of row three, out of Frierson, Louisiana, the 40 of Thomas Dowden. To his outside, the Lazy 8, Ray Ingalls Racing Machine. Out of Newberry, Texas, that is Chase Hatton. And by his left on the fourth row in the 27L, that will be Michael Easley. Looks like the 45 of Riddle electing to go to the back. And the 40 of Dowden not going to make the call. So we will go eight laps. All of these cars will advance to the feature tonight. So it'll be Darlin and Beasley to lead us to green. Beasley with a good start, and he'll take a healthy advantage into turn one. Chase Hatton and Lazy A going to throw it up top, try to chase him down. Got a giant run down the back straightaway. Here comes Lazy A to the inside. Going to throw a slider on Beasley. Beasley looking for the crossover, but Hatton will lead lap one. 
So it's Hatton Beasley to me. Easley and Darlin, your top five. So Hatton on the top, Beasley on the bottom. Toomey also gonna run the bottom as Easley looks to the bottom. Now Beasley gonna throw it up top. Try to run the same line as Chase, see if he can make it around. Beasley running the top and one and two and the bottom and three. Jump to the Lazy Eight machine of Chase Hatton. Hatton is riding the top all the way around. And he is extending his lead. We are halfway this time. So Hatton, Beasley, Toomey, Easley, and Darlin, your top five. Easley beginning to hunt down Toomey, try to take away the third spot. Chase Hatton will deal with the lap traffic of Brent Riddle. They'll go underneath them, have no issues. Beasley will also clear him. As well as the rest of the field. Riddle will pull off the back straightaway, call it a night. Two to go, Chase Hatton this time. Jason Beasley has a healthy advantage over third. He'll be able to maintain his top two spot. And 27L trying to catch up to the T11 of Toomey and take away the third spot. White flag this time for the L8 as Chase Hatton. Coming out of turn four in the Ray Ingalls race in Lazy 8, Chase Hatton takes heat race number one for your Pro Mods. Jason Beasley in 16 comes home second. T11 of Jacob Toomey comes home third. Michael Easley in 27L fourth. And Randy Darlin in the Marshall Muffler 33 will come home fifth. So Chase Hatton in the Lazy 8 takes heat race number one for your Pro Mods. Rolling on the speedway now, heat race number two. On the pole out of Houghton, Louisiana. 515 Johnny's Pizza. 515 Trent Humphrey. To the outside of Humphrey out of Mooringsport, Louisiana. In 41, that is Brad Timone. Inside of row two, the bootlegger race cars 26 of James Griffin. To his outside, the star three, Robert DeLude. Inside of row three, the Barton Glass 43, that's BJ Cook. To his outside, the Jays Lawn Care, number two of Jeff Rice. And rounding out your field, that's 79 of Charlie McDonald out of Jefferson, Texas. Once again, eight laps. All cars will transfer to the A. So Humphrey and Timon will lead us to green in this one. Five on five gets the advantage off the four. And here comes the 26 to the inside of the 41. Griffin gonna look to the inside of Timon. He's gotta run, He's gonna get a little bit loose. These cars do run on slick tires. It's hard to get a modified to hook up on slick tires. Here's slide job from BJ Cook, gonna take away the second spot from Timon. So it's Humphrey Cook and Timon at the line. Here comes Griffin to the inside. Once again, he'll take away the third spot. They're three wide for fifth. Three wide briefly between the Lude McDonald and Rice. So Humphrey set and sail, and James Griffin looks to make a battle of it with BJ Cook for second. BJ slips off the back straightaway and will give it to Griffin. Now he's going to fight back to the inside. 26 and 43 J, Raging Ward for second. Cook trying to get a run through the middle as Griffin runs the top. Humphrey and 515 is checking out on the field. Griffin gonna slide high. Cook continues to run the middle. And we'll see two to go. Excuse me, halfway. Halfway this time as there's problems for Robert DeLude in star three. Looks like he'll be able to Exit off the back straightaway and we'll stay green. Here 
Here comes B.J. Cook to the inside, trying to get around the 26 once again. Humphrey's going to come out of four. He'll see two to go this time. Griffin and Cook also see two to go. Here comes Brad Simone in 41. He'll get loose off the top, off the turn four. Charlie McDonald in 79.5. Here comes Jeff Rice to the inside in the fifth spot. And the white flag flies for the 5.15. Forty-one of Timon loops it in turn four. Caution flag is out. Gonna wave the yellow checkered on this one. Never mind. Like we're gonna do a restart with one lap to go. So that will allow BJ Cook and James Griffin to close the gap to the 515 of Trent Humphrey. Griffin's gonna choose the top, putting BJ Cook on the bottom. So Humphrey, Griffin, and Cook gonna go with a two lap showdown. BJ Cook gonna get to the inside of Griffin, take away the second spot. Here comes Griffin back to his inside. He's gonna slide it in there, make contact. Cook gonna be able to pull away from the 26 for now. As Humphrey's trying to regain the lead that he had, he's running the top, Cook looking through the bottom. White flag this time for 515. 43J and 26 follow. Here comes the 26 looking to the inside. James Griffin looking to the inside of EJ Cook. Nothing there yet. Cook's going to be able to extend his lead down the back straightaway. Once again, Griffin going to dive it in deep, but there's nothing there. The 515 of Trent Humphrey takes deep race number two. BJ Cook in 43J comes home second. The 26 of James Griffin comes home third. Charlie McDonald in 79 comes home fourth. And Jeff Rice in two will round out your That will conclude your Pro Mod Heat races. Up next will be your limited modifieds. We have two limited modified heat races this evening. All cars will advance to the A. Heat race number one will line up like this. Out of Wells, Texas on the pole in 31 will be Colin Hodges. To his outside out of Bossier City, that is Cody Tupper in 23. Inside of row two, the Bitten Bullet, Josh Bauckham in 25. To his outside. And the Caddo Lake General Store number 18, that is Stephen Hogan out of Jefferson, Texas. Inside of row three, out of Harleton, Texas, the 20 of Brent Tidwell. With Adam Roy, the Louisiana State Dirt Track champion, out of Texarkana, and two to his outside. The final row will look like this. On the inside, Ricky Burke out of Wascom, Texas, in 55. With Matthew Thompson out of Shreveport, Louisiana, in 54 T to his outside. Eight laps, all cars advance. We're going green. Hodge is going to get a good jump. Tupper's going to throw it up top. Here comes Bacham to the inside. Two by two as they head into turn three on lap one. Bacham on the inside. Hodge is outside. Tupper gets a little bit loose, and here comes the two. Bacham going to slide up. Make contact between Bacham and Hodge. They're three wide for the lead. Bacham on the outside. Hodge is on the middle, and Roy on the inside. Here comes Hodges, gonna throw it back at Bogum. Bogum's on top there, three wide ones again, coming off the four. Bogum leads at the line, Hodges second, and Adam Roy's third. Once again, a three car battle. Here comes Roy with a slide job, he'll take the middle away from Hodges, and will be three wide once again, heading into turn three and four. Adam Roy and two will have the lead coming out of Roy, Bogum, and Hodges put on a show. And Bauckham's going to lose it right in front of the three-wide battle for third four. The 20 of Brent Whitwell will go over the top of one and two, trying to avoid the 25 of Bauckham. Josh Bauckham is not happy with the 31 of Colin Hodges. Race fans, how about a three-wide battle for the lead? Got Adam Roy, Colin Hodges, and Josh Bauckham three wide for multiple laps.
It would appear Tidwell and Bauckham will have to start from the rear. But keep an eye on the 20 and the 25. They'll be making their way back up front quickly. So the boy, Hodges. And Tops in your top five. We have three laps in, five to go. Position for this restart. The 2021 Louisiana State Dirt Track Champions got it rolling tonight. Two will lead us to green. Hogan and 18 gonna throw it up top, see what he can do. He's gonna get a run. Try to get around the 31 of Hodges. Here comes Stephen Hogan and 18. Hogan up top, Hodges through the middle. Here comes Ricky Burke on the bottom. Burke will have third at the line this time. Here comes Ricky Burke looking to the inside of Colin Hodges. Hogan's gonna get a run down the back straight away. Hogan throws it up top, Burke on the bottom once again. Pair of orange cars battling for second. One. Hogan 18 doing everything he can to make the top side work for him. Adam Roy and two has set sail, he's checking out. Ricky Burke gets a little bit loose and he's gonna loop it in hers for him more, but he'll keep it green. He will set third. Now Colin Hodges has a little bit of breathing room in his second place spot. Adam Roy sees white this time. Roy, Hodges, Hogan, Thompson, and Tidwell. Here comes Tidwell looking to the other. Trying to get a run on Thompson for the fourth spot. Bauckham's there as well. Adam Roy takes heat race number one for your limit modified. Colin Hodges in 31 comes home second. Steven Hogan comes home third. Matthew Thompson in 54. T comes home fourth. And Josh Bauckham in 24 will round out your top five. Once again, your race winner, the Louisiana State Dirt Track Hill Speedway last weekend. That's the two of Adam Roy. Heat race number two for your limited modifieds will line up like this. On the pole in the Jesus Saves 11. Out of Benton, Louisiana, it'll be Troy Keith to his outside. Coming off a second place finish at the at the stock. That was Corey Neal Jr. in C7. Inside of row two out of Texarkana, Texas in J3. Jimbo Clayton. To his outside, Chris Hall out of Stonewall, Louisiana in 55S. Inside row three, the Giddy Up, Giddy Up 409. That's Ron Willardson out of Kilgore, Texas with the Rock and Roll Whataburger 6, 561 of Kevin Simpson to his outside. Row four consists of Joshua Martin and 88M to, on the inside. To his outside, the final starter will be Brian Matthews out of Longview, Texas in 712. Not sure who's behind the wheel of the 92 tonight. That is Andrew Rossum's own car. Was registered at 67 Speedway. He has been a late arrival here tonight. Troy Keith, Clayton, and Hort, three wide. Three wide taking the green. Clayton on the bottom. He got Neil up top. And Troy Keith running through the middle. Clayton and Keith gonna go side by side off the turn four. Jimbo Clayton will lead left. Outside. 
409 of Ron Willardson goes up in smoke, pulls to the infield. The battle between Clayton and Keith continues as Swipe to lead lap number two. The 92 making his way through the field. He's looking to the inside of Joshua Martin. He'll take four. Troy Keith now has the lead as Clayton's going to look to the top. Here comes Corey Neal Jr. to his inside. Troy Keith will lap number three. Here comes Corey Neal in C7. So it's Keith, Neal, and Clayton going at it for the top spot. Troy Keith will lead with the halfway this time as another three wide battle is emerging. Slide job. Corey Neal and he'll take the lead. Clayton gonna throw it up top, try to get around the 11. And he does. It'll be Neal, Clayton, and keep your top three. Troy Keith not giving up, battling back to the inside of Jamie Clayton. Clayton's gonna say, oh hi, keep coming down low. Here we go this time. To go this time for Corey Neal. Clayton's gonna throw it up top. Here comes the 11 back to the bottom. Troy Keith gonna slide up in front. Scott second down the back straightaway. Corey Neal will deal with the lap traffic of Brian Matthews. We'll get around him without any issue and Troy Keith will beat Jamie Clayton to the white flag. Lap traffic may be coming back there as a J3 slips up. Here comes a 92 down the back straightaway. Coming out of four, Corey Neal Jr. wins heat race number two. Troy Keith comes home second. Jamie Clayton will be third. Andrew Ross on fourth and Joshua Martin. So rounding out your top five, Joshua Martin coming home fourth. The 92 of Andrew Rossum. Third place, the J3 of Jamie Clayton. Second place runner. 11 of Troy Keith and taking your heat race number two winner, the C7 of Corey Neal Jr. Rolling towards the speedway now will be heat race number one of two for your front wheel drive four cylinders. On the pole out of Wascom, Texas in K8, that's going to be Hughes with John Harris out of Lindell, Texas, to his outside. Or two also out of Wascom, Texas. That's going to be Cullum Dittmore with Connor Cook out of Princeton, Louisiana, and 22 to his outside. Row three, the 10G out of Sibley, Louisiana, will be Brian to his outside out of Blanchard, Hunter Armstrong, five. All by himself on row number four. Crozier City, Louisiana, that's going to be the 4A of Austin Warner. These heat races will be six laps in distance, and all cars will transfer to the A. So Hughes and Harris will lead us to green. A8's going to get a good jump. The double zero not taking off quite as well. Here comes Connor Cook to the to the outside. Brian Geis in the middle. And they're three wide between Dittmore, Geis, and Cook. Here comes Geis to the inside. Going to try to throw a slide job on Cook. May have been some contact there, but either way, he'll take the lead. It'll be Geis, Cook, and Hughes, your top three for now. Dittmore looking to the inside at 94. So Brian Geis and Tenji out front, followed by Connor Cook in 22. Logan Hughes in K8, Callum, Callum Dittmore in 94, and Hunter Armstrong in 25, your top five. John Harrison, Austin Warner, gonna do battle for the sixth spot. Coming out of four, Brian Geis and Tenji, we'll see halfway this time. Top three continues to be Geis, Cook, and Hughes. Two to go this time for Geis as Dittmore slows down the back straightaway in 94. 
prize for Cullum Nittmore. Coming out of four, I see white flag this time, Brian Geis. Troubles for Dittmore will give John Harrison double zero the fifth place spot for now. They'll have to hold off Warner for one more lap. Coming out of turn four in the 10G, your heat race number one winner, Brian Geis in 10G, followed by the 22 of Connor Cook. The K-8 of Logan Hughes, the 25 of Hunter Armstrong, and the double zero of John Harris, your top five. Heat race number two for your front wheel drive. Four cylinders will line up like this. On the pole out of Mesquite, Texas, currently sits in the USRA National Tuner Points. That'll be Daniel Thompson in 17T. To his outside out of Benton, Louisiana, coming off a strong fourth place run. And a recent $1,200 to win, Cole Derrick Memorial. That is the chef, Jackson Gallagher in 46. Inside of row two, out of Paradise, Texas in 2P, that is Abra Parker. To her outside, Zach Lee in 10GX. Inside of row three, Jack DuPont out of Shreveport, Louisiana in 06 with Mikey Brunker to his outside in 777. And bringing up the rear, the 2021 Louisiana State Dirt Track Champion, that's Luke DuPont in 05. Six laps, all cars will advance. Thompson and Gallagher will lead us to green. Here comes a 2P of Aubrey Parker. She's going to get a good jump. Gallagher going to jump back to the outside of her. 2P going to slide up in front of the 46. He's not going to give it up without a fight, though. Parker looking to the inside. Thompson will lead lap one. And here comes Parker to his inside. She's going to throw a slider. He's going to give her a shot. They're nearly three wide for third. As DuPont looks to the inside of Gallagher. Jack DuPont to the inside of Gallagher. They may have made contact. Like the contact will send Gallagher over the edge of three and four. He'll keep it green. Keep rolling. So it's Parker, Thompson, DuPont, DuPont, and Lee, your top five. And this time for the 2P of Opera Parker. Here comes Mikey Brunk, 77, going to look inside of Zach Lee in 10 GX. He'll take away the fifth spot. The DuPont brothers side by side coming out on more. And Jack continues to hold the third spot, but Luke's trying to take it away from him. Here comes Luke. I'm looking to the inside of the 06. Doesn't quite have enough momentum just yet. So it's Parker out front. She'll see the white flag this time. Jack DuPont all over the back bumper of Daniel Thompson. Here comes brother Luke DuPont to the inside, trying to take away third. Coming out of four, out of Paradise, Texas, the 2P, Aubrey Parker wins heat race number two. Contact between DuPont and Thompson. And then contact between Brunker and Thompson. So unofficial results, the 2P will take home the win. 05 comes home second, 06 will come home third. The 10G of Zach Lee will come home fourth and Jackson Gallagher will rebound for a top five in 46. Rolling onto the speedway now, your first and only factory stock B-Main tonight. 
On the pole out of Kilgore, Texas, that'll be Austin Hale in 13X. To his outside out of Ashdown, Arkansas in 15, that'll be Austin Turner. Inside of row two and double zero out of Shreveport, Louisiana, David Bosbury. To his outside, the number one out of Robilene, Louisiana, Stoney Dubois. Inside of row three, Justin Sells in 25. With a 10X of Josh Daughtery to his outside. Inside of row four, 4C of Cody Wright. To his outside, Tyler Dubois in 77. Lonnie Morgan in 69. Jeff Hammett in 13. Vic Cates in C7. And tagging the rear of the field in the 32 will be Justin Whitehead. Hale and Turner gonna lead us to green. Smoke out of the double zero of Osbury, but he's gonna make a three wide down the back straightaway. Double zero's gonna split, gonna slide down both of them, and he'll take the race lead from Turner and Hale. Three wide through the middle of the field between Whitehead, Dubois, and Donnery in 10X. New boy is gonna make contact with daughter with Sells, excuse me. As Bosbury, Turner, and Hale continue to run top five. Top three, excuse me. Top five will go to the A. So you have Bosbury, Turner, Hale, New Boys, and Sells are top five right now. Here comes Dottery to the inside of Sells. Gonna try to take away the fifth and final transfer spot. Sell's gonna give a shot to the 13X and he's gonna lose control. Narrowly avoid a disaster there. And here comes Justin Whitehead at 32. 32 to the inside of the 13X and he'll take away the fifth spot. Now he'll look to the outside of the 10X of Josh Daughtery. So Bosbury, Turner, New Boys, Daughtery, and Whitehead. Here comes Daughtery to the inside of Dubois. He'll take away the third spot. We'll see halfway this time for David Bosbury. Whitehead looking to the inside of Tyler Dubois this time. He's gonna work the bottom and he'll take away the fourth spot. Here comes Jeff Hammett, 13. He'll take away the sixth spot from Austin Hale. And now he'll try to go after Tyler Dubois in 77. He'll have four laps to do it. It's Bosbury, Turner, Daughtery, Whitehead, and Dubois, your top five. Here comes Jeff Hammett in 13. Three laps to go this time. Here comes Doc Daughtery in the 10X. Lap traffic of the 4C of Cody Wright may become an issue. As Bosbury continues to run the bottom as does almost nearly every other car on the track except the 13. Just the tail, all going into four. Here comes Hammett, gonna try to get a chance at the 77 of Dubois. Coming out of four, white flag this time for David Bosbury. But keep your eyes on the battle between the 77 and the 13. Here comes Jeff Hammond to the inside. Does Hammond have enough to steal the fifth and final transfer spot from the 77? Doesn't look like it. Bosbury wins. Turner, Daughtery, Whitehead, and Dubois are top five. So the youngster in double zero, David Bosbury, will take your B main win. Austin Turner in 15 comes home second. The 10X of Josh Daughtery comes home third. 32R, Justin Whitehead comes home fourth. 
And rounding out your top five in 77, that's Tyler Dubois. Now to turn it back to the voice of the USMTS, Bryce Hall. Thank you very much, Colin. We'll get set now for the first of two real racing wheels. B mains, 15 laps, top five. Advanced tonight, summer race equipment, USMTS modified A main, fueled by Casey's Jason Hughes. We on the front row of B main number one. He's at a Salina, Oklahoma in the 12. His outside will be Gregory Muirhead. Muirhead out of Maybank, Texas in the 22. Row two on the inside, Kyle Beard out of Truman, Arkansas, the 86. Alongside Kate Dillard out of Robilene, Louisiana, the 97. Row three to the inside is Jason Good out of Watertown, South Dakota, the 85. Alongside Chris Hennigan out of Marshall, Texas in the 16. Row four, it's Mark Smith, the two double S out of Anthony, New Mexico. Alongside Joe Duval out of Claremore, Oklahoma, the 91. Row five to the inside, we'll find the 718 of Tommy Canham out of Denham Springs, Louisiana. Mark Taylor to his outside, the 369 out of Sheridan, Wyoming. Row six on the inside, Dylan Clark, out of, or excuse me, Dylan Pike out of Waxahachie, Texas, the sixth star. Row seven on the inside, Austin Carter out of Alvarado, Texas. He's in the 44 with Chris Kratzer to the outside, the 19 Artaway. in the 8C alongside T.J. Tolleson, 38T out of Bevins, Texas. And your final starter will be Dan Ebert out of Lakeshore, Minnesota in the 60. So we will get set for the first of two real racing wheels. B Thousand to win, Summit Racing Equipment, USMTS modified A-Main fueled by Casey's. Jason Hughes and Gregory Muirhead on row number one, ready to get to it next time around in turn four. Kyle Beard inside of the second row, a podium finisher here with the American Racer Modified Series a few weekends ago in the 86. Kate Dillard, of course, multi-time USMTS winner here at the land of three wide. He starts the outside of the second row. Jason Good, Chris Hennigan. Hennigan, a two-time USMTS winner. In the 16 in his career, he starts the outside of the third row. There we go, 15 laps, top five go to the show. Hughes and Muirhead bring us around to the start of this one and we're green and real racing wheels, B main number one. Kate Dillard going way upstairs that time through turns one and two. Grab the second place spot from Kyle Beard. He's slung to the outside of Gregory Muirhead, and he'll have the runner-up spot here on lap number one. Look out, Mark Taylor. Taylor spinning in the 369. And the caution flag will come out. So a quick caution to start out. Real Racing Wheels, B-Main number one. Mark Taylor goes around on exit turn number four. And we will go under the caution. Jason Hughes out the initial lead. Kate Diller to the extreme high line of the racetrack. He was able to grab the second place spot from Gregory Muirhead, who slipped back a couple more positions as Kyle Beard and Jason Good have both raced by Muirhead. Joe Duvall in the sixth place spot. One spot out right now. Again, one lap completed a 15 in real racing wheels. B main number one. Two B mains tonight for the USMTS Modifieds. Top five out of both of those. Then we'll have a couple of series provisionals, potential emergency provisionals as well. And that will set us up for tonight's A main event here in the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. Trying to get the back half of the field lined out here before the restart of this one looks like we will successfully do so lights will go out one lap completed a 15 jason hughes with control of the restart out of turn four green flag drops and we're back underway here in b main number one k dillard blast on the outside of the racetrack once again that red and white number 97 Trying to go after your leader here in the early goings. J. 
Jason Hughes on top, Kate Dillard in second, Kyle Beard third, Jason Good fourth, there comes Joe Duvall. Duvall into the final transfer spot by Gregory Muirhead. Look for more through the middle as well. He'll try to race by Jason Good into the fourth place spot. Duvall alongside the Watertown South Dakota. And he'll be into the fourth place spot this time by. Joe Duvall's found something through the middle of the Arc Latex Speedway. He'll work to the outside of Kyle Beard. Quickly dispose of the 86 as well. Joe Duvall the third. Right through the middle of the racetrack in the 91. Beard back in the fourth place spot. Fifth is Jason Good, Mark Smith. Trying to race his way into the show by the 85. So Mark Smith trying to go after Jason Good. Race for the final transfer spot as Jason Hughes hits his marks out in front. Battle for the final transfer spot. Wages on down into turns one and two. Smith saw the opening on the inside. Was not able to capitalize though. And Jason Good holds on to the fifth and final transfer spot. Good all over the back bumper. A Kyle Beard as well. Beard back in a distant fourth now as Joe Duvall sits his sights on Kate Dillard and Jason Hughes. Approaching the midway point, a real racing wheels, B-Main number one, Jason Hughes leads, Kate Dillard in second, Joe Duvall third, Kyle Beard fourth, and Jason Good, that's the top five. Jason Good, now he'll utilize the middle line of the racetrack to try to work to the outside of Kyle Beard. See if he can make that stick through the middle the same way Duvall did to advance a couple spots in the 91. Mark Smith trying to strike down the inside though, and those two continue to Challenge the 86 of Kyle Beard, the race for fourth. Good three car battle there down the back straightaway. Nine in, six to go that time around. Race for fourth, still a good one. Beard and good in the final two transfer spots. Smith on the outside looking in. Five to go this time by for your leader, Jason Hughes. It's Hughes on top, Dillard in second, Duval third. Beard and good still side by side for fourth. As Smith rides in the sixth place spot, Dan Ebert started tail the field. He's up in the seventh. Time definitely running thin, though, for the 60 as he tries to make his way forward. He's rolling the outside of the racetrack, throwing caution to the wind to try to reel in the top five transfers. But he's only got four laps to work with now in the 60. Not sure that he's going to be able to get there, but he's going to try along the top side of the racetrack. Meanwhile, out in front, Jason Hughes and Kate Dillard have both worked by the lap car, Austin Carter. Carter will go a lap down to the 12 and the 97 here with two to go. Two to go, Hughes, Dillard, Duval, Good, and Beard. Your top five transfers, Dan Ebert rolling along the top side of the racetrack. They'll have to work by Mark Smith before he can challenge the top five. Their leader out in front takes the white flag. One lap to go for Jason Hughes. Jason Hughes into turn number three. Out of turn number four, Hughes will pick up the B-Main win. Dillard will take second. Duval will grab third. Race for fourth. Coming to the checkers. Beard to the inside. It'll be Jason Good that hangs on to fourth. Kyle Beard takes the final transfer spot. So, Real Racing Wheels, B-Main, number one under the checkered flag, your top five transfers in fifth, Kyle Beard. Fourth goes to Jason Good, third to Joe Duvall. Second in that one, Cade Dillard and your B-Main winner. He's out of Salina, Oklahoma, the Hughes Racing Chassis, Mullins Racing Engines, West Siloam Pond, Cates Recycling, Pick It Out, Murphy Oil Company, and Red Tail Tackle, number 12, Jason Hughes, your winner of Real Racing Wheels, B-Main at number one. Hughes, Dillard, Duval, Good, and Beard, your top five transfers out of B-Main, number one. B main number two set to roll out next with Lance Murray on the front row, the Imperial California racer in the 19 SB. Is outside the 19, that's Dustin Sorensen out of Rochester, Minnesota. Row two on the inside, cool hand, Lucas shot the 69 out of Chatfield, Minnesota, alongside Kurt Myers of Cameron, Wisconsin, in the 1M. Row 30 to the inside, Tyler Wolf out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, the 4W, alongside Tyler Davis out of Hayesville, Kansas, in the 65. 
Mason Williams will start fourth row on the inside. The 24W out of Folk, Arkansas to his outside. Colton Horner out of Houston, Texas in the 56. Row five to the inside. JT Wasman out of Pine Island of Minnesota. The 51W will start ninth. To JT's outside will be Brandon Givens, the 2G out of Wichita, Kansas. Row six on the inside, Kenny Gaddis out of Diana, Texas, the 2G, alongside Billy Jack Brutchen out of Gladewater, Texas, in the 78. Row seven on the inside is Jason Ingles out of Longview, Texas, car 12, alongside Stephen Gaddis out of Henderson, Texas, in the 2S. Row eight, it's Casey Fowler, the 64, from Grand Saline, Texas, alongside Nathan Smith of Anthony, New Mexico, in the 88. And your final starter will be Kevin Peters, the 21, Hallsville, Texas. Looks to be a scratch in the 21, not seeing Peters on track. 15 laps, top five, advance into tonight's A main. A pair of 19s on row number one, the 19 SB of Lance Murray and the 19 of Dustin Sorensen. They will set the pace on row number one. The caution lights are out. 15 laps to decide the next five moving into tonight's Summit Race Equipment A main fueled by Casey's. And we are green in real racing wheels, B main at number two. Good side-by-side -side action out of the 19 in front. That will be the 19 SP of Lance Mari that slides ahead of the 19 of Sorensen. Meanwhile, trouble for Mason Williams down in turn number four. Caution flag will come to the air for Mason Williams. So don't forget, race fans will travel over to Monroe, Louisiana tomorrow if you're looking for more USMTS action. The inaugural visit for the USMTS Modifieds to Dirt on the Rev will be at Revolution Park in Monroe tomorrow. If you can't make it there live and in person, we invite you to the next best thing. Tune in on Race and Dirt TV or Race on Texas for action tomorrow night at the Rev as we wrap up this four-race swing for the Summit Race Equipment USMTS Modifieds fueled by Casey's. Beautiful facility in Monroe, Louisiana. Looking forward to that show tomorrow for the USMTS Modifieds. Another 10,000 to win event for the series tomorrow at Revolution Park. Here we go. Furled up green flag shown to the field. One lap completed of 15 here for Real Racing Wheels. B-Main number two. Lance Maury with the road to himself out in front. Dustin Sorensen in second. Lucas Schott, Tyler Davis, Tyler Wolf. The very early top five here of Real Racing Wheels B-Main number two. Back to green out of turn four. Sorting it back out through turns one and two. Dustin Sorensen back alongside Lance Murray for the top spot. Can he throw the slider out of turn number four? He won't, but he will clear by nonetheless. And Dustin Sorensen will grab the lead on lap two. So Dustin Sorensen to the lead here on lap number two. Maury to second. We'll see Lucas Schott working down to his inside, side by side there for the runner-up position. Lucas Schott has it at the line. Able to make it stick through the middle. Now he'll slide across the racetrack in turn number two. Shot into the runner-up spot. Maury drops to third. Tyler Davis, Tyler Wolf, still the top five transfers. As Dustin Sorensen hits his marks out in front of your field. Sorensen shot, Mari Davis Wolf. That's the top five. The Gressel Racing 2G right now on the outside looking in. Brandon Gibbons, Colton Horner in that seventh place spot. Kurt Myers, Nathan Smith, and JT Wasman in the top 10. Out in front, though, Dustin Swordson cruising right now. That MB Customs Action Engineering powered number 19. He holds the lead. Lucas Schott runs in second. Mari in third. Davis and Wolf still the top five transfers. Brandon Gibbons trying to make a run for the top five along the bottom. Colton Horner trying to do it up top as Mason Williams goes around again in turn number four. 
So Mason Williams around in turn four, and we will go back under the yellow with six laps completed of 15. So Mason Williams will pull pit side the 24W. Bill doubles up behind your leader, Dustin Sorensen. Shot Mari Davis-Wolf, the top five here with six in and nine to go. Brandon Givens trying to make his way forward, one spot out. Colton Horner in that seventh place position as well. Those two trying to make a run. Here for the top five as the field works back around to the start in turn number four. Out comes the green, we're back underway with six in and nine to go. Real Racing Wheels, B-Main number two. Lucas Schott trying to attack the outside of the racetrack in that second place position. Colton Horner with a pretty good restart in the 56. We'll see if he has anything for your top five transfers. Brandon Givens back now to his inside as well as their two by two. Fourth on back. Davis alongside Wolf. Now Givens in the picture along with Colton Horner. Horner with a big run down the back straightaway. Now he'll dive down to the inside of the racetrack and turns three and four. Tyler Wolf, last night's runner-up, now just trying to hang on to the final transfer spot. He'll hold on to it over Givens, but here comes Horner cracking the whip along the top side of the racetrack, the 56. Trying to close in on your final transfer spot as Kurt Myers and Brandon Givens get together in turns three and four. Kurt Myers and Brandon Givens get together in turns three and four. That was the race for the seventh place position. And out comes the yellow once again, this time with nine laps completed and six to go. Tyler Wolf was last night's runner up at the RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas, but right now he's just trying to hang on over Colton Horner in the race for the final transfer spot. Horner was making a run for it just ahead of that caution flag. We'll see if Wolf can maintain over the next six laps, or we'll see if Horner can race his way in. Likewise, Nathan Smith had a pretty good run last night at Crandall as well. He's on the outside looking in in the 88. A couple spots out of a transfer spot now as Myers and Givens were involved in the caution down in turns three and four. So nine in, six to go, and Real Racing Wheels, B-Main number two. Sorensen, Schott, Mari, Davis, and Wolf. The top five transfers with a half a dozen laps to go as track officials continue to tend to the 2G of Brandon Givens. Not sure if Givens will refire or if he will have to call it quits in the Gressel Racing 2G. Looks like he may be under his own power now down in turns one and two. And possibly, yep, there he'll go. Kurt Meyer's going to rejoin the back of the pack as well. Officials going to work on the lineup. Looks like the 2G of Brandon Givens is going to be granted his position it looks like he will be in the seventh place spot on the restart now so Givens will keep his position potentially So here we go, back to the green flag, nine in, six to go. Lucas Shot back to the top side of the racetrack once again through turns one and two. Shot gonna go after 
Dustin Sorensen for the lead here with five to go now. Tyler Wolf able to capitalize on the restart to pick up another position over the 65 of Tyler Davis. Those two race side by side for fourth. Colt Warner watching that battle and trying to find a way to race his way in. 11 in, four to go this time by. Down to the inside of the Ford Epi of Tyler Wolf. Race will be for the final transfer spot here in the waning stages of this one. 12 in. Straight away. Wolf able to fend him off. A couple more laps to go here in real race. Davis, the top four. Wolf trying to hang on for the final transfer spot. Two to go. White flag comes to the air out in front of your field. Dustin Sorensen with one more lap here in B main, number two. Colton Horner gonna give it a try along the outside of the racetrack for the final transfer spot. Pedaling hard along the cushion. Horner with a big run down the back straightaway. Checkers out, Sorensen wins the B main, but keep an eye on the battle for the final transfer spot. Two, the checkers off a of turn number four. Wolf hangs on at the line. So checkers out over Real Racing Wheels, B Main at number two. A valiant effort there at the end out of Colton Horner will come up one position short as Tyler Wolf will grab the fifth and final transfer spot. Tyler Davis crosses in fourth, third goes to Lance Maury, second to Lucas Schott. But your B Main winner, he's at a Rochester, Minnesota, and MB Customs with an action engineering racing engine under the hood. The Ford Metro Inc. Carol's Corn Popcorn and CJ Auto Sales number Number two. Rolling on the speedway now will be your Pro Mod A main. How about this, race fans? On the pole, your 2021 Louisiana State Dirt Track champion in the Lazy Eight, that is Chase Hatton. To his outside, the 2020 Louisiana State Dirt Track champion in the 515, that is Trent Humphrey. Inside a row two in the Sinla RV Center 16, that's Jason Beasley. To his outside in the Barton Glass 43J, BJ Cook. Jacob Tomey in T11 on the inside of row three. To his outside, the bootlegger race cars 26 of James Griffin. Inside a row four on the inside. That is 27L of Michael Easley. To his outside, the 79 of Charlie McDonald. Inside a row five, the Marshall Muffler 33 of Randy Darlin with the Jays Lawn Care Service. Number two of Jeff Rice to his outside. Two drivers late. We have the 41 of Brad Timon and the 45 of Brent Riddle. Britt Riddle. Excuse me. So we're going to go 20 laps. Hatton and Humphrey will take us to green. So Hatton's going to roll through the middle. Humphrey's going to throw it up top, see what he can find. As Beasley's digging on the bottom in 16. Riddle going to pull it to the infield and call it a night. We got Hatton on the bottom, Humphrey on top. Beasley running the bottom as well. Side by side with a 5 on 5 and battle for the second spot. We're going to adjust his line a bit this time. Should go for a little bit more of the middle line instead of the top. Doesn't seem to make a difference. Here comes Beasley slinging it in on the bottom. He's going to take away the second spot from the 515. Track seems to be pretty bottom dominant as of right now. But as we know, Arklatech Speedway is always changing. So Hatton continues to lead. Beasley is second as B.J. Cook will now take third away from Trent Humphrey. Humphrey is not finding what he needs there on the outside. So it's Hatton, Beasley, Cook, Humphrey, and Griffin, your top five. 
Hadn't gonna get by the lap traffic of Brad Timone in 41 with no issues. 515 has finally found his way to the bottom and now he'll try to regain ground on the 43J of BJ Cook. You got Beasley on the extreme. A little bit off the burn. Here comes Humphrey on a dime in the corner, trying to get a run down the back straight away. Doesn't quite. To 43J. Here he comes to the inside. 43J going to sling it. Chase Hatton is rolling out front. Once he clears, will likely extend his lead. Slight contact between the 43J and the 41, but no harm done. And now we have a side-by-side -side battle between Michael Easley and 27L and James Griffin and 26 going for the fifth place spot. Easley on the bottom, gonna force Easley to the outside. Griffin maintains the fifth spot for now. Chase Hatton will see halfway this time. He's got nearly a full straightaway lead over Jason Beasley in 16. Caution flag will wave for the 41 of Brad Timone, who has looped it over in turn two. We'll bunch the field back up. Race fans, a reminder that our Crown Jewel Factory stock race, the Cajun Classic, will be held on October 8th and 9th this year. That is our annual 5,000 to win factory stock race, the original Crown Jewel. So we're half, halfway down. We have 10 laps in. We'll have 10 laps to go. Your top five sits like this. Hatton, Beasley, Cook, Humphrey, and Griffin. Chase Hatton and Lazy 8 will lead us to back to green. And Jason Beasley and 16 will try to get a jump to the bottom. Here comes Beasley going to sling it in. Hatton's going to get the jump. Easily takes away the fifth spot from James Griffin. So Humphrey's on the bottom. He's going to force Cook up. And Trent Humphrey will take the third spot back. So it's Hatton, Beasley, Humphrey, Cook, and Easley are top five. Side by side down the back straight away for fifth. Once again, Easley and Griffin going at it in 26 and 27L. T11 of Toomey's gonna spin around and turn four and he'll keep it moving. Momentarily. We gonna push. 
nearly makes contact with a 16 of Beasley. But Beasley gets by unscathed. Five to go this time for Chase Hatton and Lazy Eight. to go this time for the Lazy Eight of Chase Hatton. Hatton, Beasley, Humphrey, Cook, and the 26 of James Griffin has now worked his way back into the top five. Randy Darlin in 33 holding up the 16 of Jason Beasley may give Trent Humphrey and 5-1-5 a chance. Sixteen's got to go high. Here comes the 5-1-5 to the inside. As Chase Hatton sees white flag. Hatton going to make his way around the top of turn four. Coming out of four, the Lazy 8 Chase Hatton will win. Jason Beasley in 16 comes home second. Trent Humphrey in 515 third. BJ Cook in 43J comes home fourth. And the 26 of James Griffin will round out your top five. Once again in victory lane, the Lazy Eight of Chase Hatton. Well, Chase, you just pulled away from them tonight. No one had anything for you. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Let's try it one more time. There it is. What about now, guys? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me out there? <laughs> All right, guys. Woo! Yeah, the race car was really good tonight. You know, we didn't change much. Well, I ain't going to lie, we changed a whole bunch of stuff from last week. Uh, just trying to get better for next year. Uh, you know, it's really cool to be able to win with these USMTS guys here. You know, they're the best of the best. They're the baddest modified drivers out here in the country. Uh, but the race track, it was really good. I got to thank my dad. He come out here with me again tonight. He's with me, with me every night. Uh, my girlfriend, she's there at the house. Uh, I know she's jumping up and down on the couch right now. Uh, she's watching it live. Uh, all my sponsors, David Hook, Constru David Hook Construction, Twin City Towing, 79 Trucking, IRP Race Cars. Uh, Mr. Ray Ingles, still can't forget about him. He's still here with us every night. I know he is, guys. Uh, Team 211 Motorsports, uh, me and Trent, you know, we seem to be on that deal. We seem to be getting something clicking. Uh, I think he finished third tonight. It sucks he couldn't finish second. Uh, Rivera Transmission, uh, my my girlfriend's family they 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 coming down here this week uh you know spend some time with us since we don't really get to go up there and see see them that much uh we're always racing but uh can't forget all them guys all you fans out here that come out every night come out here and support the usmts guys make their funds possible uh whew, i just excited guys <laughs> all right chase who's your pick for the usmts ten thousand to win cajun clash ah uh, I know he had to run a B, but I think K. Dillard's going to get up there and get it. Anyone else agree with him? <laughs> I'll give it up one more time for the Lazy Eight of Chase Hatton.
So just a few moments away from tonight's 40 laps, Summit Racing Equipment USMTS Modified A-Main fueled by Casey's 10,000 to win tonight for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. We'll have a special presentation here ahead of tonight's A-Main event in the four-wide salute. So again, a special presentation that we've been doing the past few nights with the USMTS Modifieds. So before we get into that, we'll begin introducing drivers here in the next few moments, the first 13 starters, and we will get through the rest of the field before the four-wide salute here tonight. Again, appreciate you race fans for joining us here tonight at the Arklatech Speedway, and we invite you out to Monroe, Louisiana tomorrow, the dirt on the rev. Revolution Park in Monroe, the place to be tomorrow. Here we go, though. A-Main rolling out. First 13 starters tonight. The 75 of Terry Phillips out of Springfield, Missouri, will be front row on the inside. Fido Gallardo winds up outside pole tonight. The G7. The zero, that's Jake O'Neill out of Tucson, Arizona, alongside Carlos Samata Jr., the 54 out of El Paso, Texas. Alongside Derek Ramirez out of Woodward, Oklahoma, in the 4R. Row four to the inside, Rodney Sanders in a happy Texas car 20, alongside the triple four, Brooks Strength from Raymond, Mississippi. Row number five to the inside, Jake Tim out of Winona. Minnesota, the 49 junior, alongside Zach Vanderbeek at a new share in Iowa in the 33Z. Row number six to the inside, Manuel Williams, the second out of Folk, Arkansas. The 24M will start 11th. And the outside will be the J17 of Jake Gallardo from Las Cruces, New Mexico. And your 13th starter will be Salina, Oklahoma's Jason Hughes. Car 12 starts the inside of row number seven. Again, your first 13 starters here tonight for this special presentation ahead of tonight's Summit Racing Equipment, USMTS Modified A-Main. So getting things in position here for the 13 starters that will help us here for this dedication ahead of tonight's USMTS Modified A-Main. So, race fans, we want to welcome everyone to the Arklatek Speedway. Thank you for being here tonight for the ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash. Since 1999, the United States Modified Touring Series has been proud to present the four-wide parade lap featuring the main event drivers carrying the American flag and Lee Greenwood singing God Bless the USA. Tonight, the USMTS and Arklatek Speedway are going to do something special and we invite all the great Americans here to be a part of this one-of-a-kind dedication. The following names are not ones that most of us here will recognize, but they are incredible people deserving of our gratitude. Sergeant Jahani Rosario Picardo, age 25, of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Sergeant Nicole G., age 23, of Sacramento, California. Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover, age 31, of Salt Lake City, Utah. Corporal Hunter Lopez, age 22, of Indio, California. Corporal Dagan Page, age 23, of Omaha, Nebraska. Corporal Humberto Sanchez, age 22, of Logansport, Indiana. 
Lance Corporal David Espinoza, age 20, of Rio Bravo, Texas. Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, age 20, of St. Charles, Missouri. Lance Corporal Riley McCollum, age 20, of Jackson, Wyoming. Lance Corporal Dylan Marola, age 20, of Rancho Cucamongo, California. Lance Corporal Kareem Naku, age 20, of Norco, California. Navy Corpsman Maxton Soviak, age 22, of Berlin Heights, Ohio. Mouse, age 23, of Coryton, Tennessee. These 13 brave soldiers lost their lives in Afghanistan doing their duty. And, and Orclatech Speedway want to take a special moment and thank these incredible individuals for doing the hard work of keeping America the land of the free and the home of the brave. Tonight we race because all gave some and some gave all.
So thank you very much, race fans, for joining us there as we tribute the fallen 13 soldiers in Afghanistan. Appreciate you for being a part of that. We'll run you through the rest of the lineup as the field has made their way out on the racetrack. Row 7 to the outside, Dustin Sorensen, the 19. Row 8 inside, Kate Dillard, the 97, alongside the 69, Lucas Shot. Row 9, Joe Duvall, the 91. Lance Mari in the 19, SB. Row 10, Jason Good, the 85. Tyler Davis, the 65. Row 11, Kyle Beard in the 86. Tyler Wolf in the 4W. And row number 12, Dan Ebert in the 60. Kurt Myers in the 1M, your 24 starters. Here tonight at the Arklatex Speedway. So, Arklatex Speedway, if you're not on your feet, it is certainly time to get there, race fans. It's the most beautiful side in dirt modified racing. Old Glory flies four wide with the USMTS. So the flag retrieval crew will go to work down in turn at number one. Appreciate you race fans for taking part in that four wide salute here tonight. The tribute to the 13 fallen soldiers as well. As we'll get set for tonight's 40 lap Summit Racing Equipment USMTS modified A main fuel to buy Casey's. 24 drivers in the hunt for 10,000 to win here tonight. Terry Phillips and Fido Gallardo on row one. Jake O'Neill, Carlos Amata Jr. on row two. Tanner Mullins, Derek Ramirez, that's the front three row, rows. Rodney Sanders will be fourth row inside. Brooks Strink, fourth row outside. Jake Tim, Jake Gallardo, Jake Tim, Zach Vanderbeek on row number five. Manuel Williams the second, and Jake Gallardo on row six. Jason Hughes, Dustin Sorensen, row at number seven. Kay Dillard, Lucas Schott on row number eight. Joe Duvall, Lance Maury, row nine. Jason Good, Tyler Davis, row 10. Kyle Beard, Tyler Wolf, row 11. Dan Ebert and Kurt Myers, that's how they will line up for tonight's 40-lap, 10,000 to win. USMTS modified A main here at the Arklatex Speedway, night three of four for the series. We'll wrap this swing up tomorrow at Revolution Park in Monroe, Louisiana. Should be a great show at the Rev tomorrow, the inaugural visit for the USMTS Modifieds at the Rev tomorrow night. Plenty of business to take care of here this evening. Jake O'Neill riding around the back here, missing Fito Gallardo's G17. See the J-17 of Jake Gallardo, but Fito not making the call. Jake O'Neill at the back of the pack as well. So hearing the zero of Jake O'Neill was late to staging, so the zero of O'Neill will have to start at the tail of the field. 
He was qualified in at third for the A main, but he was late to staging, so O'Neill will have to drop to the back. So that's going to hand Carlos Amata Jr. front row outside as Fito Gallardo has not made the call either in the G17. So the 75 of Terry Phillips and Carlos Amata Jr. will now make up row number one. Tanner Mullins will be inside of the second row with Derek Ramirez now to his outside. So Jake O'Neill late to staging. He has to go to the back. There's Fito Gallardo. He was the outside pole sitter, and he's going to start at the back as well. And this is going to have some major points implications. Derek Ramirez could really take advantage of this to stretch out that points lead if the zero of O'Neill can't work up through traffic. So a few developments in that one. The outside front row starter, Fido Gallardo, has to start to the back, and the second row inside starter starts at the back as well. Meanwhile, Derek Ramirez has pulled out a line here. I believe he's probably pointing out something on the racetrack. That's typically what happens when somebody pulls out a formation and well ahead of the field, showing the officials some debris over in turn two. So Derek Ramirez points the debris out in turn number two. Logan Staley will hustle over to retrieve that from the racing surface. So Jake O'Neill late to staging. Fido Gallardo late as well. That will give us nearly a new front row. Terry Phillips, the CBiz McGraphics Pole Award winner. We'll start row number one on the inside. And now Amada in his backup car here tonight starts on the outside of the front row. Lights are out, ready to go green next time in turn four. So here we go, lights are out, ready to get to it here at the land of three wide. Phillips and Amata now row number one. Mullins and Ramirez row two. Sanders straight the front three rows. Into three out of turd number four. The ninth annual USMTS Cajun Clash goes green here at Arklatex Speedway. Carlos Amata Jr. trying to find his footing up to the outside as Tanner Mullins and Rodney Sanders both go racing by the 54. Lap number one will go to the 75 of Terry Phillips. TP on top for the opening circuit. Tanner Mullins gonna follow along the bottom side of the racetrack. Sanders through the middle in third. Eric Ramirez in the fourth place spot here in the very early goings as Jake Tim follows along the inside in the 49 into the top five. Tim into an early top five spot. The top five all lined up along the hub of the racetrack. Amata working the outside line. He may see Vanderbeek work by him shortly in this one, and he will. The Z-Man goes scooting by Amata into the sixth place spot. Bottom, loop, bottom group looks a tad dominant here in the early goings of this one. Brooks strength a little bit deeper in the pack, trying to make his way forward along the top. Now he will... Out in front, Terry Phillips shows the way around the Arklatex Speedway. Two DNFs to kick off this weekend for the 75 of Terry Phillips looking to turn it around here tonight in Vivian. With the lead out in front, just under a half a straightaway ahead of Tanner Mullins. Good distance back in third, Rodney Sanders as Derek Ramirez runs fourth with Jake Tim. Rounding out your top five runners. Sixth is Vanderbeek. Seventh is Manuel Williams, the second. Eighth is Brooks Strength. Ninth now Amada as Kate Dillard rounds out your top ten. Dillard trying to work by Amada into the ninth place spot. Few drivers trying it along the outside of the racetrack. Brooks Strength just ahead of the 54 of Amada as well as Jason Hughes. Trying the top line of the racetrack. Everybody else pretty well lined up across the bottom as the 75 of Terry Phillips paces the field around the Arklatex Speedway. Phillips showing the way. 
Second is Mullins. Third is Sanders. Fourth, Ramirez. And fifth, still Tim. Zach Vanderbeek in sixth. Pretty well a top six breakaway as Manuel Williams, the second. About a full straightaway back from Zach Vanderbeek. He rides in the seventh place spot. Dillard is eighth. Dillard's starting to move forward a couple of positions in the 97. He's in the eighth place spot. Brooks strength is ninth. It was Dustin Sorensen that was scored in the 10th place spot last time around. Carlos Amata Jr., Jason Hughes, Jake Gallardo, Lucas Schott, Tyler Davis make up the top 15. Terry Phillips beginning to approach lapped traffic here. 11 laps completed for this 40-lap main event. So Terry beginning to roll up on the back of the field. Kirk Myers and Fido Gallardo. First two drivers that may be in danger of going a lap down as Terry Phillips can see them now down into turns one and two. 12 laps now completed. Phillips, your leader. Second is Mullins. Third is Sanders. Fourth, Ramirez. Fifth, still Jake Tim. Sixth, Vanderbeek. Seventh is Dillard. Eighth is Williams. Ninth is Strength. And tenth, Dustin Sorensen. Jason Hughes working just outside of those top ten. The first driver to try the high side. Now Brooks Strength will go up there a couple of positions ahead as well. Jake Gallardo, Lucas Schott, Carlos Amata Jr., Tyler Davis. That's going to be the top 15 as Terry Phillips works to the back of the pack. He'll have to roll up off the bottom here as he tries to work to the outside of the lap car, the 1M of Kurt Myers. So Myers goes a lap down along with Fido Gallardo as Terry Phillips will put those two between himself and the 0-2 of Tanner Mullins. Terry Phillips out in lap traffic, 15 in, now 16 in that time by. 24 remain here at the Arklatex Speedway TP. Trying to run away with this one, that Don Babb Motorsports Andy's Frozen Custard 75. Trying to work by Lance Murray down the front straight away. He will do just that down into turns one and two. Lance Murray going to quickly exit pit side. The 19 SB will call it quits here with 18 laps now completed. 18 laps in. Terry Phillips with a .737 second advantage over Tanner Mullins through lap traffic. Couple cars side by side ahead of the 75, the 85 of Jason Good, the 60 of Dan Ebert. As Phillips is down to the inside of Ebert through the middle of the racetrack, he'll split the lap cars. He'll go three wide with the lappers. Good on the inside, and Ebert up top has to go three wide with lap traffic through turns three and four. 20 in, 20 to go. Tanner Mullins down the back bumper, the 75 of Phillips. He's got the advantage to point three six one seconds. Phillips going to skate up the hill on exit of turn number two. Mullins alongside the lapped car down the back straightaway. This one's going to get good in lap traffic. Mullins now alongside Terry Phillips for a split second as he'll squeeze by the lapped car down the front straightaway. So Terry Phillips going to see pressure out of Tanner Mullins. Point four two eight seconds was his lead last time around. Mullins with a little bit of clear sailing now as he's worked by Dan Ebert. Lap cars beginning to file out around the bottom side of the racetrack along that preferred fast groove along the bottom that is beginning to clean up. And you see these leaders have to work through the middle to try to work around those lap cars. And Terry Phillips does just that to the outside of Jason Good. Now he'll fall back in line behind the lap car, the 54 of Carlos Samata Jr. So Phillips back to the bottom line of the racetrack. He'll show his nose down to the inside of the 54 of Amata. Now he'll have to venture back through the middle of the 75. Phillips trying to venture out. Mullins trying to capitalize. He tried to snag that bottom line away from Phillips. Phillips will roll back through the middle once again. Mullins pinned to the bottom side of the racetrack to try to steal that line away from the 75 as Phillips tries to work the lapped cars. So Phillips trying to work by the 54 of Carlos Samata Jr. Inside of 15 to go this time by. We've got 26 in, 14 remaining. Phillips behind the lap car of Amata. 
Mullins rolling through the middle. Rodney Sanders, Derek Ramirez, Jake Tim. That makes up the top five. Sixth is Vanderbeek. Seventh is Dillard. Eighth is Strength. Ninth is Sorensen. And tenth, Manuel Williams, the second. Jason Hughes, Jake Gallardo, Lucas Schott, Tyler Davis, and Tyler Wolf. The top 15 here as the laps begin to click away. Final dozen laps coming up now. 28 in, 12 to go. Phillips is cleared by Amata down the front straightaway. He's trailed Amata for about five or six laps, but now he will work by the 54. Puts that lap car between himself and Tanner Mullins. Mullins may get by Amata quicker, though, and he will as Amata slips out of the groove. That's going to allow Mullins to race by the 54 with ease. Ten laps going to remain at this time around as Terry Phillips works the hub of the racetrack off a of turn number four. Ten to go. Phillips going to have to deal with the 91 of Joe Duval, who again has found the preferred groove along the inside of the racetrack. Those lap cars staying well within the groove. Right where the need leaders need to be, so we'll see if Phillips just rides behind the 91 or if he decides to try to pass through the middle side of the racetrack. 32 in, 8 to go when they cross by the flag stand of this time. 32 in, 8 remain for the 75 of Terry Phillips. Trying to pick up win at number three on the season. Had a hot start to 2021, but it kind of cooled off through the mid-summer months for the 75. Has had a rough couple of nights as well. Looking to turn that around here as we'll work the final six laps this time around. Mullen staying within reach of Phillips. 34 in, six to go. Five to go this time by for the 75 of Terry Phillips. Right now, just still riding behind the 91 of Joe Duval, but Mullins has nowhere to go. He just has to follow as well. Sanders, Ramirez, and Tim still making up the top five. Four remain this time by for Terry Phillips. Springfield, a Missouri veteran. With a couple of wins this season, narrowly holds on to a top 10 position in the USMTS National Point standings. His wins this season came at the season opener at RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas. He also won Easter weekend at the Hamilton County Speedway in Webster City, Iowa. But has been on a bit of a dry spell since then. He'll see the twin sticks this time by two to go here at Arklatech Speedway. White flag going to come out out of turn number four. One more time around for the 75. Mullins going to try something through the middle here on the final lap. Throw caution to the wind in the 0-2. Nothing to grab a hold of in one and two. We'll see if he can find something in three and four. Checkers to the air off of turn number four. Terry Phillips wins at Arklatech Speedway.
So he will pull his Andy's Frozen Custard Don Bab Motorsports 75 into USMTS Victory Lane. They will present the checks and then we will walk him over here to the front straight away and talk about tonight's win here at the Arklatech Speedway. Third win of the season for the driver out of Springfield, Missouri. Ten thousand here this evening for the seventy five of Terry Phillips. How about it, race fans? He climbs from the car. Terry Phillips, your feature winner tonight at Arc Latex. So they will take the pictures, then we will bring him up here for a word in a moment. Looks like he's going to go ahead and head this way. Going to make Terry do a little bit of walking after that long 40 lapper there. You're going to have to work with me, Terry. We're going to have to keep this microphone in one exact spot, I'm afraid. Let's talk about that one. How important was it to, uh, to get out front early? Get under the pole. Well, nobody say anything. <laughs> I'm glad I drew the pole. <laughs> there he is, Terry Phillips. We're going to go ahead and send him back. Let's just grab a picture here and we'll get a... We'll get, <laughs> it's a high thing. <laughs> we'll grab a word with Terry a little bit later here for the uh, broadcast where we're going to fight the uh, mic here on the front straightaway.
All right, race fans, it is time for your factory stock A main. This will be a 20-lap race. Your lineup goes like this. On the pole in the J27 out of Marshall, Texas, that is Scotty Case. To his outside out of Bossier City, Louisiana, in the 12, Bo Perry. Starting third out of Streetport, Louisiana, will be the 27 of Josh Greenwalt. To his outside, Doug Vick Jr. in 4V. Inside of row three, Jeff Lewis out of Houghton in the 40 with C.J. Howell in 34 to his outside. Inside of row four, Frank Canazaro out of Mansfield, Louisiana in five with Alex Turner out of Ashdown, Arkansas to his outside. On the inside of row five will be Rodney Howell in the two out of Pineville, Louisiana with Peyton Daughtery in 34P to his outside. Starting 11th on the grid out of Falk, Arkansas in the 54X. That'll be Clint Shirtliff. With LJT, Little John Tuggle to his outside out of Bossier City, Louisiana in eight. Starting 13th on the grid will be Randy Cox in R45 out of Mooringsport, Louisiana. For the outside of Cox will be the 55 of Dalton Dubois out of Robilene, Louisiana. Inside of row eight, Gary Harvin in 25 out of Falk, Arkansas. To his outside, the double zero of David Vosbury out of Shreveport. Lining up inside of row nine will be Austin Turner out of Ashdown, Arkansas in 15. To his outside, Josh Daughtery out of Keithville, Louisiana in 10X. And making up your last row, the 32R of Justin Whitehead out of Texarkana, Texas. And Tyler Dubois in 77 to his outside out of Robilene. So it'll be Scotty Case and Bo Perry to lead us to green. J27 coming off quick time at Chatham Speedway last weekend in the 15,000 to win, and Bo Perry coming off the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship win at Boot Hill Speedway. So both pole sitters coming in with some momentum. So far they're side by side. Clint Shirtliff gonna go under the pair of Jeff Lewis and CJ Howell. And Scotty Case will lead lap one. Perry looks to the inside. He'll take the race lead away from the J27. Here comes Randy Cox to the inside of Doug Vick Jr. Going to battle for the sixth spot as Frank Canizaro takes third away from Jeff, from Joshua Greenwald. Jeff Lewis getting loose back in the field. The 44 is going to keep it rolling. So it's Perry, Case, Canizaro, Shirtliff, and Greenwald now. Shirtliff and Canizaro making strong runs early as Whitehead has already passed nearly half the field in 32. are going to try a little bit more of the middle line as Whitehead's going to throw it up top. Everyone else is on the bottom, but the 32R is going to look to the top and see if he can find something no one else has. Shirt lip on the back bumper of Canizaro trying to take away the third spot. Here he comes to the inside. Nothing doing yet. So it's Perry, Case, Canizaro, Shirt lip, and Greenwalt, your top five. Bo Perry in the 12 trying to extend his lead and go back to back weekends with victories. Keep an eye on the yellow 32R of Justin Whitehead as he's making progress. Here comes Frank Canizaro to the inside of Scotty Case. Frank Canizaro trying to steal one in five. Quickly going to separate himself from the J27. He may have something for Bo Perry in 12. Whitehead looking at the outside of Vic once again. Contact pushes him up the track. And Vic and Little John Tuggle will look back to the inside of Whitehead. So it's Perry, Canazaro, Case, Shirtliff, and Greenwalt, your top five. Here comes Gary Harvin looking at the inside of Greenwalt trying to crack the top five. Can't quite do it just yet. Here comes Shirtliff going to dive to the inside of Case. Nothing there yet for that one either. So Bo Perry is setting sail. Frank Canizaro is trying to chase him down. Here comes Shirtliff to the inside. He's going to have to get on the brakes. Not enough real estate there. As Harvin is fully to the inside of Greenwald now. Gary Harvin in 25 going to take the fifth spot away from the 27. They're three wide back in the pack between Vic Tuggle and Whitehead. 
White hit on the bottom, Tuggle in the middle, and Doug Vick is pushed out to the top. Whitehead's gonna prevail as the bottom, bottom line is dominant at this point. And now he's gonna look to the outside of Randy Cox. Gary Harvin has worked his way past the J27 of Case and taken the fourth spot. So we have Perry, Cannizzaro, Shirtlip, Harvin, and Case, your top five. Whitehead's doing everything he can to get there, folks. Perry, nearly a straightaway lead, is cruising. Randy Cox makes heavy contact with Whitehead, which pushes him near to the wall. And Little John Tuggle on eight will now look to the inside of Randy Cox, trying to take away the seventh spot, and he's got it. A lot of drivers praying for a caution right now. Comes Vic to the inside of Cox. Whitehead's pushing him. They're trying to make another three wide battle, perhaps. Whitehead's going to push Vic past Cox. He'll take advantage. And here comes Shirtliff gaining on the five of Canizaro as Bo Perry's dealing with lap traffic down the back straightaway. Whitehead's going to get past Cox and Vic. And now he's just praying for a caution, hoping he has a chance to make something happen. So it's Perry, Canizaro, Shirtliff, Harvin, and Case, your top five. Greenwalt six, Tuggle is seventh, Whitehead is eighth, Doug Vick is ninth, and Randy Cox rounds out your top ten for now. We have five laps to go, and Bo Perry is checking out. Gary Harvin has now reached the back bumper of Clint Shirtliff, going to try and battle him for it, the third spot. Whitehead's gonna get by Tuggle and take away the seventh spot. Now he'll roll towards the pairs of 27. Let's see what he can do with them. Bo Perry sees three to go. Full straightaway advantage now over Canizaro, who now has Shirtliff to his inside. Here comes Clint Shirtliff in 54X. He'll take away the second spot, looking for two back-to-back -back runner-up finishes. Gary Harvin gets by as well as Frank Canizaro goes up in smoke. Two to go for Bo Perry as the five exits the back straight away with heartbreak. So now it's Perry, Shirtliff, Harvin, Case, and Greenwald. White flag waves for Bo Perry. Should be smooth sailing as long as a caution doesn't come out. The 12 out of Bossier City should pick up back-to-back -back victories. Coming out of four, the 12 laser race car, house car, Bo Perry wins at Arklatex. Coming home with back-to-back -back second place finishes, Clint Shirtliff in 54X, Gary Harvin in 24 comes home third. The 27s come home fourth and fifth respectively with Case as fourth and Greenwalt fifth. Give it up for him, race fans. Bo Perry in 12. <laughs> test, test, test. There we go. All right. Bo, how does it back-to-back -back wins coming off the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship in Boot Hill last week? Man, it feels good. I mean, we've had a good car all year, but we just kept getting runner-ups, top five here and there, and now we kind of got ourselves on a little streak right now. How does it feel to officially cross the checkered flag as the first finishing car? I know you technically won last week, but I know drivers prefer to win on the track. Kid. 
I would have definitely preferred to win on the track last week, but I mean, a win's a win. They're hard to come by, and you got to take them however you can get them. But it feels good to go out there and take the lead on the first couple of laps and just go wire to wire and lead every lap. All right. Let's give it up for the race, Laser Race Cars house car of Bo Perry. You like to thank your sponsors. Yeah, I got to thank Dell's Pavement. They've come on board this year as our primary sponsor. Superior Grill, they've been with us for the last couple years. Of course, my dad built some of the best cars out there with Laser. You got, can't forget about GNA with Jake Gentry over there, J and J Motorsports. Can't do this stuff without Jody every weekend. And of course, you got a JRP products because Jeff Lewis is with us every step of the way. All right, give it up, race fans. Bo Perry becomes your third different factory stock winner in five races. Race fans, we have two more features tonight, the limited modifieds and the front wheel drive four cylinders. Pulling onto the speedway now is your limited modified A feature. On the pole out of Texarkana, Texas, that'll be the Number two of Adam Roy, won at Boot Hill last week and won, became a Louisiana State Dirt Track champion. To his outside, Corey Neal Jr. in C7 out of Bridge City, Texas. Inside a row two out of Wells, Texas in the 31, that is Colin Hodges. To his outside, Troy Keith out of Benton, Louisiana, Jesus Saves. Inside a row three, the CDR Shocks 18 of Stephen Hogan with Jimbo Clayton to his outside in J3. Inside of row four, Matthew Thompson in 54T with Andrew Rossum in 92 to his outside. Inside of row five, Josh Bockham in 25 with Joshua Martin to his outside in 88M. Starting 11th on the grid, Brent Tidwell in 20 with Kevin Simpson in 561 to his outside. Inside of row seven, Cody Tupper in 23 with Chris Hall in 55S to his outside. Row eight lines up like this. Ricky Burke in 55 on the inside with Brian Matthews in 712 to his outside. And bringing up the rear, Ron Willardson not going to make the call in 409. So we'll go 20 laps. Roy and Neil going to lead us to green. Adam Roy on the bottom. Corey Neal's going to run through the top. Here comes. The Jesus saves 11 of Troy Keith down on the inside. And Troy Keith steal one tonight at Arklatex. Neil and Roy side by side. Corey Neal leads lap one. So it'll be Neil, Roy, and Keith, your top three. Ron 
awesome to the inside of Hogan. Going to take away the sixth spot. As a caution flag waves for Cody Tupper and Brian Matthews. So the youngster Corey Neal Jr. in C7 got the jump on the two of Adam Roy that time. We'll have a restart. Roy's going to choose the bottom, which will put Troy Keaton 11 to his outside. Colin Hodges and Jimbo Clayton round out your top five. So we got two laps in, 18 to go for Corey Neal Jr. in C7. Colin Hodges looking at the inside of the 11 of Troy Keith. They'll go side by side down the back straight away. Keith going to slide high. We'll give Hodges the third spot. Andrew Rossum in 92 trying to get involved in the conversation, working his way forward. Adam Roy clips the inside berm and he spins it. Caution flag will wave for the two of Adam Roy. So we got two more laps in that time. We'll have 16 to go this time. So Corey Neal Jr. still out front. Colin Hodges has inherited the second spot. He'll choose the bottom. Once again, putting the 11 of Troy Keith to the outside. Andrew Rossum in 92 has worked his way up to fourth as Jimbo Clayton is on his outside in fifth. Matthew Thompson with a strong run in sixth so far with Kevin Simpson is outside in seventh. Joshua Martin, eighth. Ricky Burt is ninth. And Brent Tidwell rounds out your top 10. Clayton going to get a good start on the outside. There's not enough space there. They're three wide entering turn one. Rossum, Keith, and Clayton, three wide down the back straightaway. Rossum's on the bottom. Keith's going to slip out of there, and they'll become two wide. As Brent Tidwell loops it in turn three. Here comes Matthew Thompson going to crack the top five. And caution flag will wait. Caution flag will wave for the number 20 car of Brent Tidwell. Looks like we got one more lap in the books that time. So after two straight features, the USMTS and the factory stocks going caution free, 60 straight laps. We are now in the midst of a caution plague, limited modified A. We have three cautions in five laps. Hopefully these guys can get a handle on their cars and we can complete the last 15 laps without any more issues. So 
we'll have one to go this time. Corey Neal is still in the lead. Colin Hodges still running second. Andrew Rossum has worked his way up to third now. Jimbo Clayton on the inside of row three puts him in fourth. And Matthew Thompson has now cracked the top five in 54T. So five down, 15 to go. into the second position. Thompson going to try to work the top. No one has really had success up there so far. Corey Neal continues the lead. Colin Hodges in second. Rossum, Clayton, and Thompson. Their top five is the same as when we restarted. The 11 of Troy Keith trying to crack his way into the top five as Joshua Martin is all over his bumper. We lose one off, the turn, off of turn two. That may be the 18 of Stephen Hogan, and we got a pile up in turn three as well. Looks like Matthew Thompson in 54T able to keep it rolling. He may be able to re-inherit his spot because of that effort. Uh, cars involved are Josh Bockham, Troy Keith, Adam Roy, and I believe we lost Stephen Hogan on the back straightaway. Yes, that is the 18 of Stephen Hogan, the original caution down the back straightaway. Heavy left side damage for the 54T of Matthew Thompson. So Corey Neal Jr. will lead us back to green once again. Goes Ross up on the outside looking for a strong run as jo Joshua Martin in 88M will look for the inside of Thompson and take away a top five position. Ross up fighting hard on the outside of Hodges. Clayton's gonna throw it up top, see if he can find anything. Car surging all over the track, trying to find a line that can help them get around the C7 of Corey Neal Jr. Fifty-four T of Matthew Thompson slows, ending a great run from him as Rossum gets into the 31. Andrew Rossum and Colin Hodges collide, which allow Joshua Martin and Jamie. Jamie Clayton to take advantage, and Jamie Clayton slams the front straightaway wall. And the right side of that J3 is total. Even have a tire sitting on the front straightaway.
wealth. So we have multiple movers in this race, except for the pole position. That has not changed. Corey Neal Jr. has been dominant in C7 so far. Can Ricky Burke pull it off from 15? Here comes Adam Roy back into the conversation as they're three wide for fourth between Tidwell, Simpson, and Roy. They'll see halfway this time. Neil, Martin, Burke, Tidwell, and Roy, your top five. Corey Neal Jr. looks to gap the field, and he's trying to drive away from the 88M. Corey Neal Jr. continues to stretch out his lead as Joshua Martin and 88M continues to run second. Ricky Burke, Adam Roy, and Brent Tedwell round out your top five for now. We have six laps remaining in your limited modified A. Corey stretching out to half a straightaway lead now. Four laps to go for the C7 of Corey Neal Jr. Ricky Burke in 55, inching closer to Joshua Martin in the 88, gonna try to take away a second place spot. Coming out of four this time, the C7 will see two laps to go. Ricky Burke inching closer to Joshua Martin, trying to take away the second spot. Adam Roy runs comfortably in fourth with Brent Headwell rounding out your top five. Corey Neal will, might have to negotiate the lap traffic of Brian Matthews before this one is over. Cody Tupper pulls to the infield in 23, shouldn't be an issue. Here comes Corey Neal to the inside of Matthews. He'll get by. And coming out of turn four, the youngster, Corey Neal Jr. in C7 will win your limited modified A main. Coming home second, Joshua Martin, Ricky Burt Jr. third, Adam Roy is fourth, and Brent Tidwell fifth, Troy Keith sixth, Kevin Simpson seventh, Stephen Hogan is eighth, Josh Bockham is ninth, and Brian Matthews will round out your top ten in 7-12. Race fans, we appreciate you coming out to the ninth annual Cajun Clash. As you're walking out, we'd really appreciate it if you give the C7 star of Corey Neal Jr. a round of applause. Test, test. All right. So, Corey, is this your first win here at Arkle Tech Speedway? Uh, yes, sir. This is like my second race here, I think. How old are you now? I'm 17. 
All right, 17 years old, first win at Arkla Tech Speedway, folks. So over the past few months, you've been crewing on, was it Devin Moran's crew? Yes, sir. How much did you learn from Devin Moran? Uh, you definitely learn a lot, like going up and down those the roads with him and learn how it professionally goes and stuff. And uh, yeah, and um, I think the mic's off. That's the car was really good. Um, the heat race in the hot laps, it, um, the something was going wrong and it wouldn't run right. And uh, luckily we pulled the win off. And then uh, for the feature, right before the feature, we got it fixed and uh, it was a rocket. So what are your plans for the rest of the season in that crate late model? Uh, we're going to go to the 50,000 win at Chatham next weekend and see how we do. And then um, I'm sure there's some more big races coming up. And, uh, yeah. All right, race fans, a future star in the sport. That's Corey Neal Jr., 17-year-old in C7. Race fans, I say future star, but at this point, he's a current star. Buckster was put behind the 19 Bubba Seals street stock and went over to the street stock nationals and came home with a second place finish behind the race winner, Chad Thrash. All right, race fans, we have one more feature tonight. That'll be the front wheel drive four cylinders. Fans, the last A main of the night towards the speedway. Race fans, if you have to head out, we understand. But these guys put on a heck of a show every week. Last race out when we ran these guys, we had 42, 46 show up for 1,200 to win in the Cole Derrick Memorial. So your four-cylinder main event will line up like this. On the pole, out of Sibley, Louisiana, in the 10G, that is Brian Geis. To his outside, out of Paradise, Texas, the lady of the field, that is the 2P of Abra Parker. Inside of row two, 22, Connor Cook, with Luke DuPont in 05 to his outside. Inside of row three, Logan Hughes in K8 out of Wascombe, Texas. To his outside, Jack DuPont in 06 out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Inside row four, Hunter Armstrong, 25 out of Blanchard, Louisiana, with Zach Lee in the 10GH to his outside. John Harris, double zero. Jackson Gallagher, 46. Austin Warner, 4A. Daniel Thompson, 17T. Cullum Dittmore, 94. And Mike Brunker, 777. 15 laps. Geisen Parker lead us into turn one. And here comes Cook to the inside of Parker. She's going to get a run down the back straightaway. She'll hold on to second for now. Austin Warner going to side. Connor Cook's going to take away the second spot. Parker trying to run the top. See what she can find up there. Third away from Opera Parker, and here comes the other DuPont. Luke and Jack both going to get by Opera Parker and relegate her to the fifth spot. As here comes Connor Cook looking to the inside of Brian Geis. Opera Parker nearly goes for a ride over the one and two. And Jackson Gallagher in 46 is already making ground. Running the top side. Him and Daniel Thompson going to try to find a way up top. Try to get to the front. The DuPont brothers both going to look up top as well. Trying to hunt down Brian Geis and Connor Cook. Caution flag will wave as Austin Warner and Mikey Brunker have issues in turns three and four. So race fans, once again, we thank you for coming out. If you're heading out, don't forget to go by the USMTS apparel trailer.
So we have completed three laps. We'll have 12 laps to go as Brian Geis is your leader. Connor Cook chooses the inside, and Luke DuPont will be on his outside, restarting in third. Jack DuPont will restart fourth, with Zach Lee starting restarting fifth. Jackson Gallagher has worked his way from 10th to 6th so far, as Daniel Thompson has worked his way from 12th to 7th. So we have some early movers. Can they continue their progress towards the front? We'll find out with 12 to go. So Geis will lead us out of turn four, and Cook and DuPont are side by side coming out of four. Gallagher getting to the inside of Lee, gonna try to take away the fifth spot. The fast fix 46 is moving. Here comes Luke DuPont to the outside of Geis. Gallagher's gonna continue to try to run the top. We'll get a bit too high that time, and Offer Parker will reclaim the fifth spot. But here comes Luke DuPont to the outside of Brian Geis. The 05 is struck. They'll make that outside line work, but Geis is going to fight him for it. DuPont leads that lap. So it's DuPont, Geis, Cook, DuPont, and Parker, your top five. Robert Parker going to spin around and turns three and four. She'll collect Zach Lee, who will collect Logan Hughes. Hunter Armstrong spins as well as Austin Warner. And nearly half of our field was collected in that issue. So Logan Hughes, Zach Lee, Hunter Armstrong, Aubrey Parker, and Austin Warner all involved. So the 05 of Luke DuPont coming off a sweep at Boot Hill Speedway for the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship. Found his way around the outside of the 10G of Brian Geis and has inherited the race lead. So your current running order with six down and nine to go. Luke DuPont is leading. Brian Geis in second. Connor Cook third. Jack DuPont is fourth. David Thompson. Excuse me, Daniel Thompson is fifth. Jackson Gallagher sixth. Mikey Brunker is seventh. Austin Warner eighth. And Hunter Armstrong ninth. Once again, race fans, don't forget the 17th annual Cajun Classic will be held on October 8th and 9th. That is our 5,000 win factory stock classic. We have five laps down, six laps to, excuse me, five lap, six laps down, nine laps to go. A little bit of moisture in the track. We're going to have to run in real quick.
So lights are out. We'll go back to green with nine to go. Luke DuPont has had a slow pace to turn three. Get past the moisture and we're gonna take off. Connor Cook's gonna get around Brian guys temporarily, see if he can hold the second spot. And here comes David Top, Daniel Thompson. Daniel Thompson gonna throw it to the outside. Gonna try to work around Geis and take away the third spot. Can't quite get it done yet. As Connor Cook's going after Luke DuPont, gonna try to take away this win. So it's DuPont, Cook, Geis, Thompson, and DuPont. Gallagher, Brunker, Armstrong, and Warner. We are halfway down. Eight laps in, seven to go. Here comes Thompson to the outside of Geis once again. They're side by side for third down the back straight away. Thompson's got the momentum. But can he get down to the preferred line? Geis gets loose and will open up the door for Thompson, who will take third. 17T trying to make his way towards the front. Third place in the current USRA Tuner National Points. His brother, David Thompson, won our 1,200 to win Cole Derrick Memorial Race. Thompson's making up ground up on Connor Cook, but he may need another caution. Oh, it's DuPont, Cook, Thompson, Geis, and DuPont, your top five. Here he comes. DuPont is, Thompson is inching closer to Connor Cook. Cook's going to swing wide coming out of four. Bounce off the wall, and here comes the 17T. Nearly nose to tail between Cook, Thompson, and Geis. Geis got to throw it to the outside of Thompson as he falls in line behind Cook. Two to go this time for Luke DuPont. White flag for Luke DuPont, no five this time. As Geis gets back around Thompson for third. And DuPont slows down the back straight away. Did DuPont break something there? Is he just taking it easy? The 05 will win the final feature of the night. DuPont, Cook, Geis, Thompson, and DuPont. Gallagher comes home sixth, Brunker seventh, Armstrong is eighth, and Warner will come home ninth. Give it up for him. Luke DuPont, no five. All right, Luke. So you picked up a win here at Arklatex earlier this year. You're coming off the sweep of the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship over at Boot Hill Speedway. Momentum is on your side. What are your plans for the rest of the season? 
So what are the plans for next season? Are you moving up to factory stock? Are you going to stick with the four cylinders? I'm going to stay in this class one more year, then I'm going to move up. All right. How about the run from your brother? Solid top five. Yeah. Yeah. Battled with you for a good bit in the heat race. Mm -hmm. He's my cousin. Wow, yeah. My yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Give it up for the DuPont boys. Looks like the 211 of Chase Hatton going to make some hot laps in his Outlaw Modified. So that will wrap things up here tonight at the Arkla Tech Speedway on behalf of the Summit Racing Equipment USMTS Modifieds. Fueled by Casey's, everyone at Arkla Tech's, all the crew at Race and Dirt TV and Race on Texas. Thank you so very much for tuning in tonight. Hope to see you tomorrow at the Rev.